Columbia, South Carolina, Friday night, Tigers and Gamecocks, game one. Clemson, Seth Beer makes a tremendous defensive play for the Tigers in a game that was scoreless until the middle innings. Beer giving the Tigers a 2-1 lead with that home run. But the story of the night, pitching by the Gamecocks. Adam Hill, 14 strikeouts in seven innings. And a 2-2 game in the bottom of the ninth is won by South Carolina on a sacrifice fly. The Gamecocks take it 3-2. The scene moves to floor field in Greenville on Saturday. Clemson takes the early lead and then gets more offense going on the afternoon. Kyle Wilkie and Patrick Cromwell each with two RBI on the day. And the game ends with a double play for the Tigers. They take it 5-1. Stand by. Game 3 from Clemson starts now. You're watching the ACC on ESPN live from Doug Kingsmore Stadium in Clemson. The Tigers and South Carolina, the decisive game three of their great baseball rivalry. Hi, everybody. Fred Cunningham with the former Tiger, Kyle Parker. And, Kyle, you have played in games like this with so much riding on it. What's it like out there? It's a great environment today. Terrific atmosphere, one-to-one -one series. We'll see who comes out on top today. For USC, they got to get some offense going. Madison Stokes has done a lot, but he can't do it all by himself. Madison Stokes, a guy who has terrific power can drive the ball out of the ballpark he has uh, 375 so far in the series hit a home run yesterday in greenville hill bat third logan davidson for the tigers he will lead things off he's done a great job during the series of getting on base he's seen a lot of pitches taking his walks getting on base potentially setting up a chance for the guys in the middle of the order to drive in runs all right let's go ahead and now set up the lineups for you as we get ready to go with this one and we're going to see the left-hander on the hill for the clemson tigers today there is jake higginbotham two and oh on the season so far, victories against William and Mary and Dallas Baptist. He's got 10 strikeouts and has yet to throw a walk so far this season. Noah Campbell will lead things off for South Carolina. We are ready to go. It is perfect weather. 63 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. The first pitch is in there for a called strike. Take a look at that starting lineup now for the Gamecocks. Again, we mentioned Madison Stokes batting third. You see his numbers for the season. He's missed about five games so far with some injuries, but he's been something else when he's been in there. Another called strike for Higginbotham. He's quickly ahead of Campbell, 0-2. The freshman from Durham, North Carolina, batting 250 so far in the series, 1-4. for four. Pitches outside, 1-2. and two. So you got a battle of the left-handed pitchers today. Obviously pitching, defense is going to play a big factor in the game, as it always does. Called, called strike. And there's one away. That will bring up T.J. Hawkins as we take a look at that third strike. It looks like Jake Higginbotham just picks up right where he left off, throwing strikes, pounding the strike zone. Defensively for Clemson, one change you might note is at second base, Justin Hawkins getting the start this afternoon, and Hawkins will bat eighth in the order. T.J. Hopkins now, the center fielder up. Fouls it off. Falls behind 0-1. It's a conscious effort by Monty Lee getting his right-handed bats in the lineup. Uh, Hawkins, a guy who usually doesn't play second base but has a lot of power at the plate. They're trying to get him uh, get that matchup facing the left-handed pitcher. Hopkins has a pretty good history against Clemson. Hit 364 in the series a year ago. Grounds that one up. It will get through for a base hit. So the single by Hopkins gets him aboard, and the Gamecocks have their first base runner of the day. When you have a guy who pounds the strike zone like Higginbotham, you just have to go up there and be aggressive, know that he's going to throw strikes, come out swinging early in the count. You know he's going to get ahead. So that'll bring up Madison Stokes. We've been talking about him from the top. The senior from Columbia. Big time homer uh, the other day, floor field, hit that ball really well, drove it clearly out of the ballpark, off the building, left field. He's had a pretty good week. He had a couple of hits and a home run in the game against Furman. That was back on Tuesday night. Pops this one up right side. It'll be out of play. Madison Stokes kind of been bothered by the injury bug. Some unfortunate things come up through his career, but you see, I think playing in... Uh, Six games, but he already has four homers. He's been hot when he's when he's on the field, when he's in the game. Good player. And you 
you can see Hopkins at first, and they'll make the throw over there. You mentioned the power. South Carolina came into the weekend number three in the country in home runs. Clemson not far behind at number 11. South Carolina has always been known as a, a power team, guys who can drive the baseball. They look to get good pitches to hit. They're not, not a team that, you know, is going to steal a ton of bags, but they're going to drive the ball in the gap, hit the ball hard. One one count. The pitch to Stokes. Tie for a ball two and one. Of course, Higginbotham is off to a terrific start for Clemson. After missing all of last season with an injury, he was the midweek starter for the Tigers as a freshman. His career record is 5-0. and Two of those victories this year. Jake's low, 3-1. and one. Jake's got really good stuff. He's being careful with the middle of this lineup. I think similar strategies probably both teams will take. You don't want the middle of the lineup to really beat you. you got to be careful, make the other guys in the lineup put up runs and, and have good at-bats. Three-one pitch, drive right field, but it's going to be out of play. Make it three and two. We mentioned the crowd here, and it's absolutely jammed. See this decisive game three. They were tailgating two, three hours before the game. Three-two pitch, popped it up, out of play. We'll so stay at three and two runner moving on that pitch. When you have a guy who your confidence going to make contact and not swing and miss, you can put that runner in motion, try to get things started early in the game for your offense. Full count to Stokes. Pick his eye for a ball. So the Gamecocks now have runners at first and second with one out, and I'll bring up LT Tolbert, the first baseman. Tolbert having a series where he is two for eight so far. From Piedmont, so he knows the area well. One of the great things about this series, 19 Gamecocks on their roster from South Carolina, 16 Tigers are from the Palmetto State. A lot of guys who are familiar with each other. They've seen each other before. And you see that a lot in baseball with the traveling, the AAU teams. A lot of these guys know about each other, you know, through high school and then coming up and aspiring to be professionals but playing at the college uh, level either together or against each other. The 0 1. Thank you for a strike, 0 and 2. It's a well located fastball on the outside corner. Tolbert had a 10-game hitting streak that ended yesterday in Greenville. Started off the season really hot. He has an idea, a good approach at the plate. Out of the way. But he's going to have some tough at-bats today. Jake Higginbotham's really tough on left-handed hitters, a little deceptive. He's got that sweeping slider, little velocity. He can pump it up to around 95, stays in the lower 90 range. O2 pitch from Higginbotham. Grounded. Higginbotham will go to first. Makes the play. So there's two away, but the runners advance. And that bring up Chris Cullen, the catcher, with two out. It's a big spot in the game. Early in the first inning, you have to come through with runners in scoring position. A lot of times when you get in these rivalry games, you want to do too much. Just getting a base hit's huge. You don't have to hit a ball out of the ballpark. Driving in three runs, you have two guys in scoring position. Just go up there with a nice, calm approach and try to hit something hard. Cullen is one for three in the series so far. Drives it, left center field. Going after it and underneath and pulling it is Drew Wharton, and that is the top of the first. Gamecocks got a hit and a walk, but nothing across. We'll go to the bottom first. We'll see Clemson when we come back. 
Gamecocks got two on in the top of the first, but couldn't get them across. Now we go to the bottom of one with Clemson ready to come up. Take a look at the Tigers lineup on the afternoon. Again, Logan Davidson will lead things off. Seth Beer, Cromwell, Chris Williams is the cleanup hitter today. We're also keeping an eye on Justin Hawkins, who gets the start at second base today. And Hawkins will be batting in that number eight spot. You look at Cromwell. He knocked in a couple of runs yesterday in that victory. And for the season, you can see his numbers batting over 300. Defensively for the Gamecocks now. Olsen, Hopkins, and Cortez in the outfield. And they're going with a freshman today on the hill, John Gilgriff. And we only got the word this morning from Mark Kingston about his starting pitcher, as you can see. Now, he's actually a freshman from Rock Hill who graduated high school back in the fall at Northwestern. So he has started one game so far. He pitched uh, four innings against North Florida. Probably the big number for him is that he's got 10 strikeouts and only one walk. And after what South Carolina did yesterday, just walking too many Tigers, 10 in all, that might be part of Mark Kingston's decision. So Gilreath will face Logan Davidson here in the bottom of the first. First pitch is in there for a strike. What's it like, can you imagine, for a freshman in a spot like this with the series on the line? I'm sure he's excited. This is what you dream about, going out and pitching in front of a lot of people. Gilreath, the guy who can control the strike zone. He's going to get ahead. And as a coach, is confident, or you're confident whenever you have a pitcher that your, your confidence is going to go out there and command the game, allow everyone to get in the flow. You can see Logan Davids in his numbers. Six walks in this series. You have to make batters earn what they get. You don't want to put guys on first base by walks. You want to make them hit the ball. You want to make them battle. There's a drive right field underneath of it is Jacob Olson, and he pulls it down, and there's one away. So that'll bring up Seth Beer as we take a look at this last drive. This ball's hit hard down the right field line. Just not hard enough. Didn't fall, didn't, didn't fall for the Tigers, but... Uh, Good job attacking the strike zone, getting ahead, just calming down. It's always nice to go and get that first batter out. You feel relieved. Called strike on the first pitch. Beers numbers for the season. That includes that two-run home run on Friday night that gave the Tigers, at least for a while, that two-to-one lead. Before the Gamecocks came back with a run in the eighth and a run in the ninth, he pops this one up. Left field, and Cortez is under. He pulls it in, and there's two away. That's two down. They'll bring up Patrick Cromwell, the third baseman. Senior from Costa Mesa, California. Cromwell in the series. Just one for eight so far. He also had a pretty good midweek moment. He had that home run against Winthrop on Tuesday night that tied the game at eight, a game that Clemson eventually won. This is a drive left field going back for it. Off the top of the railing and out, and it's one nothing Clemson. In the middle of talking about what he did on Tuesday night, he does something instant like that, and it's one nothing Tigers. Patrick Cromwell stays on a tear, drives this ball to the opposite field over the fence to left. He's been swinging the bat really, really well. It doesn't seem like he's cooling off. But aggressive approach by this offense. I think uh, both offenses will have similar approaches. Both pitchers are similar. They're going to throw a lot of strikes. Swinging early just runs into that one. Great swing, driving the ball to the opposite field. Cromwell's second home run of the season. That brings up Chris Williams, the first baseman. Swing and a miss on that first pitch. Senior out of Garden Grove, California. Pitch in there for a ball, one and one. Chris Williams is a guy that can do some damage. An another guy who can drive the ball out of the ballpark. He's a low ball hitter, wants the ball out over the plate. 
There's a drive left side. It'll drop in for a base hit in front of Cortez. Olsen with a single. So after getting a couple of fly ball outs, Gilreath gives up a home run and now a single. And these are the pitches that Chris Williams hit so well down in the zone. He can drop his hands, drop the barrel down on the ball, drives it to left field. Great play out there by Cortez. Cutting that ball off, taking a good angle and keeping him to a single. So it comes Robert Jolly, the designated hitter. Spent most of his career here as a catcher and also DH. Has played some of the outfield so far this year. Has it taken for a ball? Jolly's numbers so far. One for seven in this series. Hitting 375 on the season. Has had some good at-bats. Just a steady performer. You can see Gilreath had a couple of hard-hit balls, but they stayed in the ballpark. But then Cromwell was able to get his to clear and then gave up the single. It's in the dirt. Williams will actually get into second. The ball was high, went into center field, not deep enough for him to even think about third. As you can see, he kind of stumbled there at second, but he gets into scoring position, takes advantage of the mistake. He reads this ball down in the dirt. Once you see the catcher drop to his knees, you're taught as a base runner to take off. It's challenging for a catcher to block the ball, pick it up, and, and still throw a runner out at second base. See Gilreath right now. He's working at a really fast pace. Sometimes you just need someone to come out there and, and slow you down. Especially when you're we're not in a situation that, that you've really been in before pitching in front of a lot of people. So Jolly will walk on four pitches. And so now Clemson has two on for Drew Wharton. Wharton in this series is one for seven. But he's off to an excellent start this season. He had no homers in his career before this year, and now he's got four coming into play today. As you can see, we've got a meeting out there. Calling the catcher, trying to get Gilreath settled down. Probably just reminding him to slow down. Stay within your plan. It's the first inning. Just a little adversity. Sometimes you feel like it's a lot worse than it is. You really have only given up one run. You have runners in scoring position. What makes you successful? Gilreath's a guy who needs to control the strike zone. Whenever he falls behind and counts, he puts himself in a situation uh, to give up a lot of hits. He's got to work ahead. Just be confident in what he's throwing. Locate his pitches. I saw Skyler Mead, the first year pitching coach for South Carolina, who came in for a word. And Gilreath gets a strike. And you see Gilreath slow down right now. Gets ahead. Throws a slider for a strike. See Drew's numbers, his one hit of the series is a double. His first hit of the season was a home run in the game we did against Dallas Baptist a week ago Friday. 1-1 one, one count. And you can see Wharton is becoming more comfortable as the more at bats he gets. He's experienced some success, but he just really needed those repetitions, seeing a lot of pitches. Fouls that went out of play. He's just kind of come in and had maybe that typical story. He came in and sat a lot in his early years and finally got his opportunity, and you can just see him building as a player over these early games of this season. Without a doubt. And a lot of these players just need some good stuff to happen for them. It's funny how baseball relies on your confidence. Whenever some good things happen, you become a much better player. One-two pitch. Popped up right side. Coming in after it hard is Olsen into foul territory. He's able to make the grab for the third out. But the Tigers get a couple, one run on two hits. No errors and a couple left. After one, Clemson won. USC nothing. Clemson fans happy right now as we head to the top of the second. Tigers getting a run in the bottom of the first. They've got a 1-0 lead on USC. Clemson leads this all-time series in the Gamecocks that dates all the way back to 1899. 
with 177 victories. And Clemson has won the last three regular season series. If they do it again today, it would follow the same pattern as the last two years in which they lost the first game, won the game in Greenville, and then won the final game of the series. So here's Jonah Bride, the third baseman, leading things off here in the second for USC. Taking bop, this pitch is taken for a strike. Jonah Bride has played in 134 career games for South Carolina. He was not recruited by June Reigns. It just feels that way. Knocks that one out of play. The 0 and 2. Quickly behind in the count, 0 2. This is what Hickenbotham needs to do to be successful. He's got to throw strikes, mix his pitches. Pitches high for a ball, one and two. Tries to back foot this, this slider, just misses in and off the plate. One two pitch from Hickenbotham. Outside will even it up at two and two. Bride has started all 11 games. 10 hits on the season. Pitch is inside. It's called third strike. Second strikeout of the game for Higginbotham. Fastball on the inner half of the plate. It seems like this series, a lot of these pitchers on both sides are working in and out. Locating well, whenever you're locating well, you can get those balls that may be a ball off the plate. You saw that on Friday. Now you see it today with Higginbotham. That ball may have been a little bit inside, but gets that call. When you have a guy who's around the strike zone, he's going to get the bit of the hit of the doubt eventually. You have to get the umpire comfortable, get him calling strikes. When he hits his spot, it just looks good. You can start stealing some pitches in and out. First pitch taken for a ball to Jacob Olson, the right fielder. You can see what he's done in the series so far. Hitless with a couple of strikeouts. Pitches inside. 2-0. And, oh. and Olsen's got some pop. Your 2-0 -oh approach right now, you just want a ball over the plate that you can throw the barrel at. Drives it left center field. Chasing after it all the way to the fence and pulling it is Teodosio, the freshman from Malden. And there's two away. That was a good swing right there. Great jump in the outfield by Tidocio, making that play in the gap. Olsen struck that ball uh, pretty good. You have to be happy with that. It's not a fair game. Sometimes you put a good swing on it, and that's all you can do. But swinging at strikes, that's ultimately the key. You have to swing at pitches that you can hit. So here's Carlos Cortez, 0 for 6 so far in the series. Fouls that one out of play. Cortez led this team in home runs last year with 12. And Cortez is a very talented player. He's going to get his chance to play professionally. Probably drafted, you know, at a, at a high round. Uh, top three round, possibly. Uh, just kind of off to a, a slow start. And it's a long season. Sometimes you press too much. You have these high expectations. There's a lot of pressure. You just have to get back to being yourself. One, one pitch. Taking for a ball, it's two and one. It's a breaking ball right here. Misses up in the zone. Cortez made the all SEC freshman team last year. He had a great SEC tournament with three home runs. He pops that one up. Wilkie is underneath. He waits for it to come down, and Wilkie will pull it in, and the Gamecocks are done in the second. A 1-2-3 inning for Higginbotham. Clemson goes at the bottom of the second with a 1-0 lead. 7-8-9 hitters up for the Tigers in the bottom of the second inning. Clemson with a 1-0 lead on USC. Let's check our umpires for today. Greg Street is behind the plate. There's a good look at him there. And you can see the other guys that are going to be at first, second, and third. Kyle Wilkie leading things off. Kyle Wilkie's had some recent success at the plate. Started the season slow, has done a good job defensively. 
it's got to be relieving for him to drive in some runs, put the bat on the ball. 1-0 pitch. Right outside, it's 2-0. Monty Lee had a great line talking about Wilkie yesterday who came into the, the game. I think he was batting 129, and he had said before the game, you get a couple of hits, you'll be able to hit what you bench press, which is 185. He, he's close at 182 after those two hits yesterday. I'm going to stick up for Wilkie and say that he can bench press more than 185. <laughs> but it... There's, there's definitely a reason that Monty communicates like that. You have to play this game relaxed, just saying those little jokes, those subtle comments. Just take some pressure off. And this is the part of the lineup that, that Gilreath has to be aggressive on. You have to come at these guys in the bottom half of this order and get outs quickly. Those guys at the top of the order, they're going to make you work. They're going to make you earn the right to get them out. You have to go at these guys just like he did right there. Gilreath with the strikeout. That's his first of the ball game. Beautiful pitch. It's like a change up down in the zone right here. After getting ambushed early in the game by Wharton, just seems like he's mixing in those breaking off speed pitches earlier in the count. This is what Gilreath needs to do to be successful. He has to throw that change up. He has to locate a slider and then just keep him honest with his fastball. So here's Justin Hawkins, the junior out of Prosperity. Takes a pitch for a strike. This is his first appearance in the series. For the season, he's got a couple of starts. One hit, that's a home run. Hawkins does, he does have power potential, can drive the ball out of the ballpark. That's the reason he's in the order right now, playing second base. So right now, just trying to do a little too much. It's tough when you haven't had a bats in a while. 0-2 pitch, outside for a ball, one and two. This ball clearly off the plate. Outside, maybe setting up another pitch, change up down, maybe that back foot slider inside. 1-2 is in the dirt, gets away. And they get two and two. Joel Reith had one start against North Florida. He's got a couple of relief appearances, too, against VMI and Charleston Southern, but a start today in a big spot. I got to that bat would fly. Over toward the Gamecock dugout. I think everybody's accounted for. That's the definition of pulling the string. You throw that change up. It looks like a fastball, and then all of a sudden it almost stops before the play. That's a wicked pitch right there. It's nice to see Gilreath bounce back. These young guys, they have talent, but they're going to face adversity. The, the talent level is different. The competition is different. you got to learn how to pitch. You have to wear it. If you're a starting pitcher, you're going to give up runs, but you have to bounce back. It brings up Bryce Teodosio, the center fielder. And if you notice now, Gilreath... Throwing that off-speed pitch, looks like change-ups right here. He started the last three hitters off with either a slider or a change-up. Swing and a miss, so and two. This is freshman against freshman. I would imagine that Northwestern and Malden may have played at some point, so they would have seen each other. If I was a betting man, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're familiar with each other. This is where you need to recognize as a hitter. The approach from the pitcher is a little different than we first started. Start this game, you're, you're really getting attacked with fastballs over the plate. Swing and a miss, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Gilreath, who comes back strong after a shaky first. Three strikeouts in the inning. We go to the top of the third, 1-0 Clemson. Top of the third, Clemson in front of the Gamecocks. It's 1-0 as you take a look at the... Part of the facility here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. That's the coaches' offices along with the players' lounge. How do we get to this decisive game three? Well, Friday night in Columbia, Adam Hill was overpowering. One of the best pitchers in the country had 14 strikeouts in that 3-2 South Carolina win. Tigers took advantage of 10 walks in game two. Got a couple of hits from Kyle Wilkie. He knocked in two runs in that 5-1 victory. And we start the third, and Higginbotham struggles, and he is not able to come up with it. So the error on Higginbotham will put Justin Rowe aboard. 
And this is a tough play for a left-handed pitcher. He's falling off the mound towards third base. Has to turn his body in order to get the ball to first base. Williams can't come in and field this. No one will be at first. It's a long run for Hawkins. Well located hit. Uh, they scored it an error. Kind of could go either way. It's a tough play right there. So that brings up Noah Campbell in the top of the order. He struck out back in the first. They will work well at first. Getting the leadoff man on base is huge. There's a drive out of play. It'll make the count 0 and 1. This is the first Gamecock leadoff hitter to get aboard. You might recall, though, that Hopkins and Stokes got aboard with a hit and a walk in the second, but were stranded. There's a lot of correlation with getting the leadoff run on and run scored. Tries to move the runner over, lays the bunt down, and they've got a miscommunication between Higginbotham and Wilkie. And the Gamecocks get a couple of uh, Clemson mistakes, and they got a chance to jump on it right here. They got two on with nobody out. No play right here. This was a, a terrific bunt. Whenever you're throwing that bunt down the third baseline, you want it to land on the grass so it doesn't roll foul. Just continue to put the pressure on the Clemson defense. When you got a guy who can really move down the line, you have no room for error. You just have to make that play, communicate early, but it was a terrific bunt. Even I, I think if it was a, a clean fielded play, it would have been bang bang at first. It would be tough to get him for sure. It was a good bunt, it's been ruled a hit. Now the Gamecocks have two on with nobody out, and that brings up Hopkins, who singled in the first. Now you're coming against this Gamecock order in the middle of this lineup, guys who can do damage. They've seen Higginbotham before. They've had their at-bats. They should have a good approach right here. He's outside, 1-0. Oh. Yeah. Madison Stokes will be next. Yeah, you have Stokes coming up, guys who can drive the ball out of the ballpark. You just want to make solid contact. On defense, you're obviously looking for a ground ball, something that you can get two outs. It's early in the game. You want to take those outs it's when you can get them. 2-0. and oh. Here's a good look at Stokes. He walked in the first. But opportunity knocking for South Carolina. Pitch is high, 3 0. Oh. It's a patient at bat. Executing in these pivotal moments is tough, especially in these rivalry games. Sometimes you have a tendency to want to do too much. Just being patient, simplifying the game. Pitch is taken for a strike and makes it 3 and 1. And that was a borderline pitch there, too. Looked a little up and in. You got the call right now. Probably have a, a little more aggressive approach, obviously taking all the way right there was Hawkins. The 3-1, taking for a strike, 3-2. That's a fastball on the inner half. This is a good pitch right here. It's a professional pitch. It's always a little intimidating throwing in with runners in scoring position. Clemson fans making some noise here. Drives it straight up the middle. To be fielded for one. They'll make the play over for two, and it's a double play. One, four, six, three on the double play. Rowe still gets over to third, but now there's two out. And this ball was struck pretty good. Probably would have got up the middle if it didn't hit Higginbotham's heel. It bounced directly to second baseman Hawkins, and then you got the double play. So that brings up Tolbert. Excuse me, Madison Stokes, excuse me. Tolbert is next. Outside for a ball, 1 0. You're playing with fire when you're pitching to Stokes. A guy who's been hot when he's in the game, can drive the ball out of the ballpark. I don't see him getting a lot to hit right here. 
both strategies, the strategy for both teams is to make the players who aren't the best beat you. The guys in the middle of the lineup, they're proven. They can hit. They know how to play. You want these other guys to have to beat you. You never want to put yourself in a situation where you're counting on getting these guys in the middle of the order out in order to win. The 1-1. One, one. Taking high for a ball. 2-1. Yeah, that was a great play by Wilkie. Saving a pass ball right here with a runner on third base. You just have to keep everything in front of you. When you have a guy like Stokes hitting, you're not going to give in. You're going to continue to try to make the perfect pitch every time. And that can lead to throwing balls in the dirt, high fastballs. So having a catcher that you can really trust can save you runs. Three balls and a strike to Stokes. Two outs in the top of the third. Tying runs at third. Pitch is taken for a ball, so the Gamecocks will now have runners of the corners with two out for Tolbert. Tolbert back in the first. Rounded out to Higginbotham, who threw it over to Williams. Good at bats by Stokes. Just understanding the game, not trying to do too much. You know right there that you're probably not going to get a whole lot to hit. You have to come in there patient. You have to understand where you are, what the situation is. See Tolbert's numbers on the season. The pitch from Higginbotham. High for a ball. Now you see Andrew C. running out to the mound, just trying to slow Higginbotham down. Of course, as we mentioned, this is the decisive game in this three-game series, which at one point actually featured two weekend series. There was a point in time all the way up to 1991 that they would play three games in Columbia and three games in Clemson each year. Of course, conferences expand. Gamecocks join the SEC, and now we're down to what still I think most fans are satisfied with is a three-game weekend series, one in each home park and one in that neutral side in Greenville. There's a ground ball right to first base. Williams will take it unassisted. And Clemson gets out of the inning. Go to the bottom of the third. Tigers up on USC, 1-0. All right, 1-0 Clemson in the bottom of the third inning. And we are very pleased to have Mark Kingston join us for just a moment. Coach, first of all, uh, welcome to Clemson. And uh, what are your feelings on a day like this with this kind of atmosphere? Well, beautiful day. This whole weekend's been great. Uh, two of the better teams in the country, story traditions, great environments to play in. So everything everything that I was told about it, it's lived up to the hype. Mark, Kyle Parker here. Appreciate you coming on. What's your basic message to your team, obviously, with this rivalry, a lot of competition? Yeah, let all the emotion obviously make you a better player. Let it make you be sharper uh, and just put everything you have into the game. We're going to do everything we can to try to win. I know the other side is going to do the same. Uh, leave it all out there. All right, Mark Kingston, head coach at USC. Thanks for joining us. All right, thanks, guys. Good luck, sir. Bottom of the third inning, Clemson leading South Carolina 1-0. Logan Davidson as the 1-2-3 batters for Clemson come up here in the bottom half of the third. Davidson hit a long fly ball out to right field in the first. Takes that one in the dirt for a ball. It's 1-0. Kind of interesting to look over the first two games as far as Clemson, perhaps with their, their discipline at the plate. Swing and a miss, one and one. 16 strikeouts on Friday night. Now Adam Hill had a lot to do with that, obviously, and Monty Lee made that point, but he just thought that they were a little too aggressive in there. And then yesterday they got 10 walks. Four of the five runs came from guys who walked to get on base. 
very patient yesterday. Whenever you run into a guy like Hill, there's not much you can do. A guy who he's on, good pitching is going to be good hitting any day. He's locating all of his pitches, running the velocity up to 97, throwing a change up curveballs for strikes. Sometimes you just have to tip your cap. It's pretty impressive outing. He is one of the best in the country, no question. There's that pitch that made it two and two. Ones of the dirt that'll make it full. And you also have to realize it's a long season. A lot of times, fan bases or even coaches, players, you want to define your team based on this series because it's so competitive and you want to win so bad. But it's always key to play good late in the year. There's a whole lot of baseball left to go. And things are definitely going to change from this series on forward. So the Tigers get a leadoff man aboard for the first time in the ball game. That'll bring up Seth Beer. I really like that at bat by Logan Davidson. A guy who's probably not hitting for the average that, that he expects to be hitting for right now. Whenever you have that, you want to go up there and get hits. But he's just being patient, not trying to do too much. You want to simplify. You don't want to make this game harder than it is. Just being patient, taking what he's given, taking his walks. Now he's on base. You have Seth Beer hitting behind him. The middle of this order who has done damage. Having people on base, it makes the pitcher have to come at him. Puts Gilrath in a tough position. Now you're pitching to Seth Beer. The guy on first base. You have Cromwell who's really seen the ball behind him. Checks when the ball gets away, and Davidson will make the advance to second, so he gets into scoring position. So Wild pitch will be against Gilreath, and now he's in a tough spot again. And this one's down in the zone. Gilreath has to live down in the zone. Whenever he throws that change up low, the fastball low, that's where he makes his money, gets people out, but also potential to, to throw those pitches that could get away. Drives it right side, right field is going to be out of play. Coming at one ball and two strikes. Fourth Seth Beer, two-time All-American, 2016 winner of the Dick Hauser Trophy. Seth Beer was all over that one. I don't think he'll see that pitch again. One-two pitch, and he gets a strikeout. There you see a little slider. He front-hipped him. Which basically means he's throwing that slider at the batter's front hip, breaking it in over the inside part of the plate. He set him up perfectly for that one, throwing the fastball. Saw that Seth Beer was ready to go on that inside pitch. His eyes probably lit up and, you know, put a good swing on it and then comes back with the breaking ball. It's all about locating his pitches. Obviously, that's key That's key for Gil Reed. Yeah, there Cromwell, as you saw right there, that's the last time he was up. That was that home run back in the first, team, first inning, the solo shot. That's the only run of the game so far is second of the season. Low for a ball, 1-0. And, oh. and since that home run, the, philosophy, the pitching philosophy has been different. A lot more off-speed pitches. They call that getting ambushed whenever you go in and the guy hits the first pitch, a fastball over the fence. Kind of surprised you right there. You think, you know, starting out the game, you could just go at him and, and get away with some stuff. But since then, Gilbert settled down, and he's throwing a lot of different pitches. Right there, you see a big curveball kind of playing with the speeds on his slider, throwing his change up. one one the strikeout of beer was his fourth now for the freshman pitch is taken for a ball two and one that was a good take right there ball looked like it was inside maybe a little high but you could just tell how Cromwell is becoming more comfortable at the plate. He's really riding that confidence, has a good idea. He's not trying to do too much. He takes his hits when he can get them. Swings at really good pitches, and he, he has the power. Obviously, you saw you know, the opposite field home run. Three and one is the count to Cromwell. 
for all of his struggles in the first inning, they only gave up the one run, and he's been able to keep them held to that spot as we're here in the bottom of the third. And that's what you want to teach these young pitchers to do. You want to teach them how to pitch, how to, how to compete during games. Big swing and a miss, three and two. So off-speed pitch, inner half of the plate. Looks like a change-up rip right there. Whenever you're throwing that changeup, you want to throw it right, right uh, at the knees, kind of making it appear like it's a fastball that's going to be a strike and, and letting it fall off the zone. Fouls it off, first base sign. He comes back with the same pitch right there, maybe a hair inside. But when you have a guy who you know is throwing strikes, it's not walking people, you're going to get those swings, especially on pitches that are a little off the plate. Gillies has really slowed down here. Popped it up left side. Coming in hard, and it's going to drop in front of Cortez for a base hit. So Cromwell popped it up and just to the right spot. It fell in front of Cortez and beyond Stokes' reach. And the Tigers have runners at the corner with one out. Patrick Cromwell's living right, right here. A jam job single to left field. Whenever you're going good, it just seems like everything's falling for you. He's hitting homers. It's a good pitch right there by Gilreath. It's unfortunate. Jam Patrick Cromwell, but that one just fell in. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. I'll bring up Chris Williams, the first baseman. He's singled back in the first inning. See his numbers on the season. This, dream, this game will drive you crazy sometimes, won't it? You just can't let it get to you. Sometimes you just have to laugh and smile, have a short memory. There's only so much you can really do. This, work Cromwell at first. And this is going to be a, an interesting matchup. Chris Williams is a low ball hitter. You see Gilreath, he's successful when he's throwing that change up down in the zone, fastballs down in the zone. There's a shot to the left side beyond Stokes. It'll score a run. RBI single for Williams. And the Tigers have a 2-0 lead. You get a fastball in the inner half of the plate right here. Just gets it by the third baseman, Bride, or shortstop, excuse me, Stokes. Driving in a run from third. You have to really get that pitch inside, especially to a guy like Chris Williams. He's strong enough where he can just muscle those balls right through the infield. Big time hit, driving those runs in. Delivering runs in key situation obviously is pivotal. Those clutch at bats, that's going to be uh, determine the outcome of the ball game. And obviously Davidson getting aboard with the walk to lead the inning off pays off again. So that brings up Robert Jolly, the, the DH. Right down the middle for a strike. Gilreath continues to pound the zone. It's still a two-run ball game. You want to stop the bleeding. Pitching for a double play ball right here. Get two outs, one pitch. Jolly slaps it out of down, out of play on the left side. And we've seen Jolly do this a lot. He takes those those pitches, those big breaking pitches, and shoots them right down the left field line. Signature Jolly swing right here. He's going to battle. He's going to put up good at bats. Ramo at second. Williams at first. One out in the Clemson third. Tigers up on the Gamecocks 2 0. Ball gets away from the catcher, and the runners will advance to second and third. Wild pitch. Second wild pitch now for Gilreath. And you can't do this if you're Gillery right here. This is going to hurt you. You bounce right back, get ahead in the count, and then he loses this one. Obviously wants this pitch back. Sometimes you try to do too much. You want to get strikeouts. It's just unfortunate. He's going to learn. He's just a freshman, a young guy. But he has talent. Whenever he mixes his pitches and gets comfortable, he's going to be okay. We've got activity in the South Carolina bullpen right now. 
That's Ridge Chapman, a junior. Taking a few warm-up throws. You can see Gil Reed so far. He's thrown 52 pitches, 32 for strikes. Four strikeouts in the game. Only one ball, but a couple of wild pitches, and that last one puts him in a tough spot. As Monty Lee is now having a couple of words with Robert Jolly. And there are some positives from Gilreath's outing so far. If you look, I, I think he's got a really good feel for his, his changeup right now. He's getting a lot of swing and misses. Guys are swinging over the top of it. He's good whenever he can mix all three of his pitches. He obviously wants that pitch back. You don't want to put these guys in scoring position. You have the potential to get a, a ground ball double play with the force coming from first base. Now you've got two guys in scoring position. You have to understand where you are right now. First base is open. You, are, you have Wharton on deck who can do some damage, but you also can create that force, create the opportunity to get a ground ball again and get two outs and get out of this inning. The one-two to Jolly. Taking low for a ball, two and two. John Gilreef trying to get out of a tough spot here in the third. Popped it up, out of play. We hold it two and two. He's going to go to what he feels comfortable with. Like I mentioned before, he has a really good feel for that changeup. He's been getting a lot of swing and misses. He's even throwing it to left-handed hitters. You see a lot of left-handed guys throw it to right-handed hitters in the, in the sweeping slider. To lefties, he's throwing it to both. 2-2 is low, 3-2. And, and this is still the situation. You, you don't have to give in if you're a, a, a pitcher. You don't have to throw the ball over the plate. You have an open base. You can create a force. Set yourself up for that ground ball double play. Jolly waiting for the full count pitch. Hits it to the left side. That's Bride will come up and throw it. They're able to get Jolly at first, but another run comes in. And it's now 3-0 Tigers. This, this is a good read right here, going on contact. Whenever you see that ball hit soft, you can just take off from third base. You don't want to go if it's hit super hard at the third baseman. You'll get yourself in a little bit of a pickle. Once he reads that ball off the hands, Cromwell just takes home. No, no play at the plate. You want to take your outs early in the game. It's still the third inning. There's a lot of baseball left. Let's just get out of this. You're down by three runs. That brings up Drew Wharton with a runner at third and two outs. Strike called. It's like a fastball on the inner half of the plate, a little low. They've been giving these pitches. These pitches, especially on the inner half from Friday, uh, Saturday, and Sunday, have been getting called. The, the zone's been big. It's been a pitcher's zone, but you have to make those adjustments. Good job by Cullen to keep that one in front of him. Makes it 1-1. Wharton flew to right for the final out of the first inning. Another one in the dirt. But once again, Cullen stays in front of it. It's now two and one. And Gilrey's been getting a lot of swings it's on this pitch exactly. That's where he wants to throw it, down in the zone. Clemson hitters making adjustments. Wharton's seen this change up before. He has an idea, but that's what he's going to go to. Two-one pitch to Wharton. Taken for a strike, two and two. There he goes back with that fastball in the inner half of the plate. Just spotting up. And like I mentioned earlier, they're getting a couple balls off the plate, especially on the inner half. Whenever you hit your spots and you get the umpire calling strikes, you can expand the strike zone. Foul off right side, they'll hold it two and two. We have really lucked out on this weekend for this series. We had a lot of rain during the week, but it all got out of here in time for Friday. 
gorgeous day yesterday in Greenville, and the same again today. Low 60s, no clouds. It's beautiful. Round ball left side. It'll go to Stokes. Stokes comes up throwing, and that will retire the side. But the Tigers get a couple of hits and a couple of runs. We'll hear from Monty Lee when we come back with the Tigers up by three. Clemson three, South Carolina nothing. We're joined by Clemson coach Monty Lee and a coach. This is a big time fun atmosphere. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, you know, a lot of people believe it's the uh, greatest rivalry in all of college baseball. Uh, I certainly think so, having grown up in the state of South Carolina, been here all my life. So it's it's definitely special to the people of our state. Monty, what's going on? It's Kyle Parker right here. What's your message been to your team? I know this rivalry is. Uh, you know, a, a lot of competition, and there's and there's pressure, and I know there's things like uh, taking the team to David Buster's. What type of things have you done to kind of take the stress off and, and let them enjoy it? Well, I think that you know, what what is team chemistry? Team chemistry is loving being with each other, uh, playing together, working together, training together, uh, having fun together. That that's really the big thing for me is just uh, making sure the guys stay loose and enjoy the experience of being a Clemson Tiger. I know you got a lot of respect for that program at the other dugout. You were there for six years. Yeah, I do. You know, obviously, uh, Coach Tanner gave me an opportunity to coach uh, with him for six years and, and loved every minute of it. And uh, But, you know, now I'm here. I'm a Clemson Tiger. Love being here and uh, love being a part of this great program and, and part of a great rivalry. All right. Monty Lee, thanks so much for being with us. Good luck the rest of the way. Yep. Thank you very much. Good luck, Coach. 3 nothing Clemson as we start the fourth inning. Cullen, Bride, and Olsen do up for South Carolina. Here's a look at the catcher. Flew out in his first at bat. That ended the first inning. Batting 296 now for the season. Taking Botham's first pitch is taken for a ball. It's 1-0. Just misses to his arm side right here. May have caught a little bit of the plate, but when you miss your spot, it, it looks weird. Gives a, an appearance when the catcher's set up inside and he has a stretch over and, and grab a ball in the outer half of the plate, even if it catches the plate. It's hard for an umpire to call that a strike. That's a called strike. It's one and one. Higginbotham comes from a pretty athletic family. His dad played football at Duke. His mom played volleyball at Duke. I believe his cousin Austin pitched yesterday for Wofford as he takes a strike there. Of course, Wofford will be in here Tuesday night to take on the Tigers, a game we'll have here on the ACC on ESPN. You see him getting that pitch, that inside pitch that may be off the plate. You saw Gilrath get a couple of those calls. It's going both ways right now. Cromwell, a beautiful play at third to get it to Williams, and there's one away. It's a nice play by Patrick Cromwell. Gets in front of this ball, sharply hit grounder. Takes his time. Terrific throw to first base. Made it look easy. It's a lot harder than uh, than it appears. A lot easier than it is. Yeah. That brings up Jonah Bride. Struck out his first time up. Drills this one. It's going to be a base hit and a chance for extra bases. He makes the turn at second. And he's going to come in sliding with a double. So one out double for Jonah Bride, and the Gamecocks get a runner in scoring position with one away in the fourth. And Bride gets started early. He's able to get the barrel, catch this ball out in front, drive it down the left field line. You see him just cruising around first base, slides easily into second. Good piece of hitting. He was going to all the way. Once you see that ball bounce off the fence, you got to be thinking, get to second base. So that brings up Jacob Olson. The right fielder has a chance to get South Carolina on the board here. Called strike. And Olsen had a good at bat earlier in the game. Drove a ball to left center field. Hit very hard. Nothing to show for it. But he seems comfortable in the box. Seems like he seems, uh, sees Hittenbachum pretty good. That was a hard hit ball that Teodosio was able to pull in at the gap in left center. Outside, one and one. It's been good quality baseball. There's a lot of very talented players that have come through both programs. You see just the flow of the game, guys throwing strikes, guys taking good at bats. You see a lot of talent. It's very enjoyable. 
the one one taken for a strike it's one and two now he's coming with a fastball on the inner half of the plate it's a well located pitch as a hitter there's not much you can do with that when a guy's throwing hard and in it's the hardest pitch to hit you essentially give up a lot of other pitches you could hit if you have to cheat towards that you'll swing it over breaking pitches those pitches away from you Ground ball, right side to Hawkins. He'll come up throwing to Williams for the out. That does move right over to third, but there's two away. It's a fastball in the outer half of the plate. Probably up in the zone. Now you're just battling your approach as a hitter to so put the ball in play. See if you can you know, squeeze out a hit. Whenever you're behind in the count, it makes it difficult. That brings up Carlos Cortez, the left fielder. And again, while he's struggling a bit to start 2018, this is a big time ball player. Round to the right side. Hawkins will come up and gets it to Williams, and Clemson gets out of the inning. Nothing doing for the Gamecocks in the top of the fourth. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth with the Tigers up 3 0. Nothing Clemson over South Carolina in the bottom of the fourth. The freshman John Gilreath has had a few tough times, but he's also got four strikeouts so far. Working in and out, throwing that change up. He got a good feel for his off speed as the game went on. Made some pitches, a lot of good things he can walk away with. First pitch of the fourth is taken for a ball to Kyle Wilkie. Wilkie, one of those strikeout victims when he struck out the side in the second. Two and zero. Oh. It's a backdoor breaking ball, just misses outside off the plate. There's a strike. It's two and one. It's a good pitch right here. You're down on the count. You just want to throw strikes. Drives it, but right at Stokes, who comes up throwing to Tolbert. There's one away. And like Gilreath did in the second inning, you want to be efficient in the bottom half of this lineup. That'll let you go deep into games. You don't want to get your pitch count up, you want to come and throw strikes, know when to attack hitters, and know when you have to take some off of it and, and kind of walk that fine line. So here's Justin Hawkins, junior college transfer. He was an All-American at USC Sumter. Drives it left side, it's gonna go in for extra bases. Hawkins will slide into second with a one-out double. That's his second hit of the season. It's a good swing right here. Just that nasty first at bat, but he needs to get comfortable. Hawkins is a guy who hasn't had the bats. He has a lot of potential offensively. He can hit the ball a long ways. You just calm down, make an adjustment. You want to get into the flow of the game. If you're not playing every single day, it makes it tough. You like that adjustment from his first at bat. Takes a deep breath, realizes that you have to swing at strikes, just puts a good swing on it, drives that ball down the left field line, easy double. So that brings up Bryce Teodosio, the freshman, number nine hitter. Swing and a miss. He's hitting 207 right now, 143 with runners in scoring position. Bryce chases this pitch up in the zone. And this is where he can improve. He sees those balls high. He's got extremely quick hands, but you're not going to catch up to those pitches. He struck out back in the second. One and one. Logan Davidson would be next. Low for a ball, two and one. Tigers, three runs, five hits, one errors. 0-3-0 zero, zero for the Gamecocks. And there's Logan Davidson. He walked and threw on the leadoff in the third and scored a run at later to make it 2-0. Now 3-0. So 
Swing and a miss. Two and two. It's a good off-speed pitch right here. You have a 2-1 count. Whenever you can start throwing your off-speed pitches in a 2-1 count, 1-1 count, you're going to be successful. You don't want to go three-run the hitter's count where they can eliminate and, and kind of, you know, pick your pitches, know that you're going to throw a fastball. Whenever you're in a 2-1 count, you can locate that off-speed pitch. You don't really give the hitter any room to know what you're throwing. Teodosio goes down, swinging for the second time. And he goes right back to it right here. Another changeup down in the zone. He's been locating that pitch so well, just right below the knees. Once you see that ball down, you just have to lay off of it, but it's so hard. Whenever you have a good feel of, of throwing that pitch that, that drops right below the knees, it's out of the hitting zone, but it, it looks like a good pitch to hit. Five strikeouts now versus a couple of walks for John Gilreath. There's now two outs for Logan Davidson with Hawkins at second. Ground ball left side. It's fair ball down the left field line. Hawkins makes the turn and will trot in. Davidson, a stand-up double, and it's 4-0 Clemson. He doesn't just walk. No, and you have Seth Beer hitting behind you, a runner in scoring position. You know you're going to get pitches to hit. Just wax this one right down the left field line. Stays fair. You see the speed of Davidson easily getting to second base. Cortez out there, he's pretty quick and has a good arm. You see him throw a, a guy out Friday night. He knows how to play these balls down the line. But it's all about clutch hitting. Whenever guys are in scoring position, you have to execute. Whenever you're in a matchup with, with two very talented teams, you're going to have to have some big clutch hits. Guys are going to have to step up. So that brings up Seth Beer. And they're going to go ahead and put him aboard. Clemson fans do not like it at all. And there's no reason to challenge Seth Beer right here. You have two outs. But imagine maybe a pitching change to come, if not this uh, next batter. You know, pretty soon, possibly next inning, you see, uh, see him up in the pen right now. Well, Cromwell is next. Of course, he's homered and singled already. So the intentional walk. Now you got runners at first and second, and here comes Cromwell. Looking at the Gamecock bullpen right now. That is Rich Chapman who continues to throw. So here's Cromwell. Hit that solo shot in the first. He gave Clemson a 1-0 lead. Singled in the third and scored. You see his numbers on the season pretty healthy. Good pitch from Gilreath. 0-1. A breaking ball to get ahead. Patrick Cromwell. Looks like he's sitting fastball. He didn't even offer that pitch. Didn't want to go out and swing out a first pitch breaking ball. Into the dirt. Cullen keeps in front of it. Runners will advance and they both make it safe. Another wild pitch for Gilreath. This pitch down in the dirt. Logan Davidson gets a great jump. You look at Seth Beer, being this trail runner is a little tricky. You can't run up on the guy, you, you have to make sure that he is going to third. Seth Beer had a great secondary advance on this ball in the dirt. So it's now runners at second and third with two out. Cromwell takes it for a ball, two and one. Chris Williams is on deck. And now with the open base, you still could be really fine with your pitches. You don't just want to throw a strike. Throw your pitch, something that you feel they can't drive. Looking for a strike, two and two. This is a well-located fastball, bottom of the zone. As we mentioned, Gilreath has five strikeouts, but he now has four wild pitches in the game. Two balls, two strikes. Cromwell drives it. 
Right field side, one run is in. Two runs are in. Six nothing Clemson. Patrick Cuomo's hot right now. Continues to stay on a tear. It's a pleasant surprise for this Clemson offense. Huge reason for their success lately. Just continues to drive the ball. You see a, a breaking ball up in the zone right here. Gilreath wants that ball lower. Whenever you throw that breaking ball, about belt high is when it gets tattooed like that. And it's all about clutch hitting. When you get those guys in scoring position, you have to have guys step up and come through. Patrick Cromwell's been that thus uh, this whole year for the Clemson Tigers. Batting 375 with runners in scoring position. He delivers there. And it's 6 0. Got to believe this would be the end of the afternoon for Gilreath. Yeah, I and think it they're, is. They're making a change right now. Ridge Chapman, the junior we've seen warming up, will leave. So Gilreath will exit with two out in the fourth inning. The Tigers already with three runs across. Five runs scored in the last two innings so far. We'll take a take a quick break. We'll be back more. Six nothing Clemson in the fourth. There's a good look at Reed Chapman, the senior, taking some of his warm-up throws. You can see his record so far on the season. One and one. ERA, 3.38, 11 strikeouts and seven walks so far. Comes in with the Tigers up 6-0 and still working here in the bottom of the fourth inning. And he comes in against a tough hitter, Chris Williams, who's two for two so far with an RBI. And despite the line, I think there's a lot of, you know, positives Gilreath can take away from this outing. And a lot of things, the, the coaching staff, you know, the catcher calling can, can learn from him. He's a guy who, he's going to live down in the zone. He's kind of hurt by a, a lot of the, uh, the pass balls. But that's going to happen whenever you have a guy who has the pitch down. Just awareness. Uh, I, I thought his uh, changeup, you know, was a plus pitch today. Got a lot of swing and misses. But it's just the little things. Whenever you have two very talented th talented teams, and as we saw on Friday night, the little things are going to determine who, who wins and loses this ball game. And obviously, the clutch hitting helps, but how many guys are on base? Where, don't give away outs. Don't give them free passes. All those things, they matter. You can see Gilreath, once he got back to the dugout, though, I hope he hears your words later because he's really upset right now. But again, we were talking about not only is he a freshman, he graduated early from Northwestern back in the fall, so got here in time for the spring. And came in and started a big ball game. Here is Williams, takes the first pitch from Chapman for a ball that's 1-0. He singled in the first and had an RBI single in the third. Coming out of the pen, starting off throwing a breaking ball. You want to get a, a good feel for the strike zone coming out of the bullpen. But it's tough, especially when you got a guy like Chris Williams who can, you know, really do damage. Cromwell is at first. The 2-0 outside 3-0. Robert Jolly's on deck. Chapman can bring it, bring it pretty good. Low mid 90s, a high release, a quick slider. He's got a live arm, but he walks Williams on four pitches. The so runners at first and second for the Tigers with two out in the fourth, and Robert Jolly comes up. He walked in the first, rounded out to third, but was good enough to bring a run home in the third. Jolly's been picking up these RBIs. He's comfortable here, especially at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. He's been clutch, a veteran player. He's been producing, driving in runs. He's hit at multiple different you know, positions in the order. 
He's hitting 571 with runners in scoring position. Straight down the middle for the first strike for Chapman. Jolly's taking all the way. You have a guy come out of the pen, throws four straight balls. You just want to prove that he can throw the ball over the plate, throw strikes. Well, at second, Williams at first. Tigers with three in already here in the sixth, or the fourth rather, to make it six nothing. A couple key hits. Patrick Cromwell, great at bat, patient, driving in two runs. Pitch is taken. Two and one. Drew Wharton is up next. You really just want to swing at strikes right now. You know he's probably not going to throw Chapman's probably not going to throw a breaking ball right now. He just wants to get a feel for that fastball. You just really have to narrow him down, make him throw that ball over the plate, swing at a good pitch. Fouled it to the back of the screen to make it 2-2. This was probably a pitch that Jolly could handle right here. Pulls off of it a little bit. And I look for him to make an adjustment. Jolly makes a living just slapping those balls right down the left field line. Pulled off of that one. Maybe wanted to do a little too much damage. But that's why he's successful. He's a great hitter because he's a, he's a veteran guy. He knows how to make these adjustments and, and change in a in and back. Low for a ball. Three and two. So we go full. And the runners are going to be moving with two outs. I'm a betting man, and it's, it's going to be a fastball. You just want to throw a strike right now. 3 2 with two out. Jolly drives it left side. It will be pulled in by Cortez. What a super play that was by Carlos to end the inning. But the Tigers score three times to double the lead. Clemson six, South Carolina nothing. We're headed to the fifth. Full house at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. The home fans happy right now as we start the fifth inning with Clemson up on USC 6-0 in this decisive game for the Palmetto Series. And let's see how your starting pitchers broke down. Gil Reith, the freshman, giving up six runs. He had five strikeouts in the game, but he also had four wild pitches that made life tough for him. Meanwhile, Higginbotham... Working on a scoreless game so far has only given up three hits, a couple of strikeouts, and a couple of walks. What have you thought of Jake so far? Higgin Poplin's been good today. I don't think this is probably the worst out of the three outings that he's had so far. And obviously those outings were terrific, but he's battled today. Really commanded the strikes on his first two outings. Right now he's figuring it out. He's doing what starting pitchers do. Some guys on base, but but he's gotten out of everything. Throws great pitches. You can see him running his velocity up. Uh, at times has lost his curveball, but still zero runs, three hits. He's comfortable out there. I like to see when whenever you bounce back. You're not going to be perfect every time. I mean, his first two outings are about as good as it gets. So uh, to expect that every time is, is a little unrealistic. But they are super encouraged by this guy. Just looking down at, at a lot of the scouts here. He, they light up when they see him pitch. He's a guy who has a great idea about what he's doing. Good rhythm. Throws three pitches for strikes. Velocity's high. You know, low mid-90s. One and one now to Justin Rowe. Who got aboard on an error on Higginbotham. That was back in the third. We are keeping an eye on the Clemson bullpen. Spencer Strider is tossing a little bit. There's a base hit right there for Rowe. Hancox get the leadoff man aboard with a single here in the fifth. And this is how you have to hit Higginbotham. You have to get going early. You have to get that barrel out in front of the plate, catch the ball before it gets to the plate. He's been working the inner half and locating there. When pitchers do that, it makes it extremely difficult. You can't be passive. 
You have to be aggressive as a hitter. Leads at you swinging at balls. That brings up Noah Campbell, who struck out in the first, had that bunt single in the third when the Gamecocks had at least a pretty good chance for some runs, but then Hopkins hit into a double play. And how do you respond? That's what you like about Jake Higginbotham right, right now, especially in that inning. Gave up two soft hits, unfortunate, you know, plays where he should have got out, but got himself out of that situation. You want a guy to calm himself down, take a step back, stop the bleeding, bad things are going to happen. Just being able to control, control it is key to being a, a good starting pitcher. 2-0 pitch, popped it up right side. Chase Knacker is Hawkins, and it's going to actually drop in for a base hit. Ball gets away at second base, but now the Gamecocks have a chance to get something going here. And this is just a no man's land. Falls in probably an inch inside the fair line, and that's another single right there. And you'll just take those any day you get them. So the Gamecocks now have a chance. Back to back singles with nobody out, and they're at the top of their order. Number two hitter, here's T.J. Hopkins, the center fielder. And this is one of those situations right here. You know, two guys on base, unfortunately a, a ball falls. It's frustrating, but you have to rebound. You have to be able to get out of situations like this, continue to throw strikes, continue to do what has been working for. Outside for a ball, it's 1-0. Hopkins singled in the first, but then he hit into that double play in the third. 273 hitter on the season, 286 with runners in scoring position. Drives it left side, this sends Wharton back all the way to the fence, will try to leap up and it is gone, and just like that, the Gamecocks have cut this lead in half. It's 6-3. He didn't miss that one. Fastball up in the zone. That's what you have to do. Get started early. Drove that ball clear out of the ballpark to left field. South Carolina's been needing this all game. Someone to step up, have some good at-bats, drive the ball whenever there's people on base. That's his first home run of the season, and it came at a clutch time. See the celebration there. That Gamecock dugout has come to life. Now 6-3 here in the top of the fifth. And South Carolina has been dormant until that. Three runs. You're down 6 nothing. You almost feel like you can't come back. It's too big of a deficit. Big three-run home run right there. It was a terrific piece of hitting. High fastball just drove it out. Left center field. It's a big-time shot. So Madison Stokes comes up with a base is empty. Still nobody out. He's reached both times today on walks in the first and the third. See his numbers on the season. Madison Stokes, extremely talented hitter. He's dealt with some adversity last year, being injured. But it seems like whenever he's in there, he just produces a resilient guy. He's had some obstacles, but has overcome them. Drive the ball out of the ballpark. You know, terrific hitter. This is just such an interesting game and such a great rivalry. It was 6 nothing, as you can see the work going on in the Clemson bullpen right now. Ryan Huggins is throwing. So is Spencer Strider. Strikeout for Stokes, the first out of the inning for South Carolina. It's a well-executed pitch right here. Back foot slider down in the zone. Whenever you have to cheat on a guy who's you know throwing with velocity on the inner half of the plate, these are the pitches that you sometimes swing at because you just have to get going so early. You're scared to get jammed. You know that he's been located on the inner half of the plate. It's a good pitch. Way to bounce back by Higginbotham. You know, the three-run homer, but you're still out there. You still have to compete. LT Tolbert up with one away. In the dirt for a ball, but just Again, it, it was 6 nothing Clemson, and in a span of about six or seven minutes on, on, a, on a clock, it's a 6-3 game, and the complexion completely changes. 
Drives it right side, but right to Hawkins, who comes up throwing, and there's two away. You're right, no doubt about it. You always want to stay involved in the game. Things can change super fast. A lot of negative things happen throughout the game. You, you know, everyone gets out all the time, give up runs, but things can change. The game will eventually come back to you as long as you just keep your head in it, keep that positive attitude, have a short memory, and just continue to play. Chris Cullen, 0 for 2 on the day. Pops it up, right side. Hawkins is calling for it. And we'll pull it in, but the Gamecocks with three hits and get three runs on a T.J. Hopkins home run, and it's 6-3. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth inning here, Clemson in front of South Carolina, but it's now a 6-3 ball game. And as you can see, Doug's King, Doug Kingsmore Stadium is filled today. There's some Gamecock fans here, obviously, but a lot of orange. This just is such a great atmosphere. You know, Mark Kingston, the coach of USC, he gets it. He made no question about it in an interview uh, earlier in the week before the series. He says this is the best rivalry in college baseball. There's no doubt about it. Both teams, just tremendous amount of pride. But you also have to mention baseball is a social event. You know, the fan base is coming together, some friendly competition, but just hanging out. See the party coming from uh, Greenville yesterday here. A lot of people having a good time and, and just enjoying all the feels and, and the game of baseball. So Drew Wharton's going to lead things off here. You know, I put it out on, on Twitter this week. Did a Twitter poll, now highly unscientific. And a, and a very, very small sample size. Obviously, football is king in this great rivalry. But my question was, as you can see, Wharton take the first pitch from Chapman for a ball. Would you rather win the basketball game, the men's basketball game, or would you rather win the baseball series? And the overwhelming number was they would rather win the baseball series. Even at a time when Clemson has got a top 25 basketball team right now. The Gamecocks, I know, a little bit of a disappointing season, but coming off the Final Four less than a year ago, and it was overwhelming. It was almost 80% uh, said they'd rather win the baseball series. We have both universities. Just the historic, great programs have produced a lot of big leaguers, have gone far in the College World Series. And the fans take pride in that. They enjoy coming out here. They consistently draw large crowds in the top ten in the country every year. Well, there's just no question. Two great ballparks, too. Founders Park in Columbia, obviously, a, still a pretty new facility. As you can see, activity in the Gamecock bullpen right now. Eddie Demurius. He's a junior, taking some warm-up throws. And, of course, Doug Kingsmore Stadium, this place opened in 1970, but you wouldn't recognize it. Just added on and on and on to it. Just part of the two great baseball programs. 3-0 pitch to Wharton. He takes it for a strike. Got ready to toss that bat to the home dugout and got pulled back. It's now 3-1. Again, another one of those pitches that may have been off the plate. Actually, it was off the plate. I see those calls whenever you have a guy who's commanding the strike zone. I don't necessarily agree with it when you have a guy who's struggling to throw strikes. You really want him to make him throw the ball over the plate, but we've seen these big strike zones all weekend. Full count. Strikes him out. So Wharton goes from ahead 3-0 to striking out in three straight pitches after that, and there's one away. And those are two well-located pitches on the outer half of the plate. This one may have been argued that it was down, but that's a pitcher's pitch. You have to battle and protect on that pitch. So with one away, Kyle Wilkie comes up. Struck out. Grounded to short so far. 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Pitch from Chapman in there for a strike. And now Chapman settling down. He has velocity. Getting ahead with a breaking ball right here. Sometimes you just need a clean slate, a fresh inning. And the game is completely different right now. You have a three-run ball game. Maybe make guys like lock in a little more and focus. I think the difference is, though, he's comfortable. He's out there, experienced some success, has a feel of the strike zone right now. He's thrown five straight strikes. Outside for a ball, one and two. 
this ball's off the plate. You see catcher Cullen setting up, you know, almost on the black in the other batter's box. And these are the pitches that you try to steal. Whenever you start commanding that strike zone, you start hitting your spots. You can stretch the strike zone a couple balls out or in. 1-2 pitch, grounded, out of play. It'll hold it 1-2. and two. But then you got Wilkie there too, so he's he's registering all this in his mind. He knows, you know, as a catcher, you can take your offensive bat over to defense. You know the pitches that the umpire's calling. If you see a guy calling balls off the plate, you kind of just take it and, and go back and, and take that to defense and, and start setting up a little further if, if you're the catcher. High and inside. Evens things up at 2-2. Two and two. Don't even think about diving over the plate right there. And Chapman throws hard, uh, uh, almost effectively wild. Whenever you miss that much and then spot up, it makes it tough. Swing and a miss. Second strike out of the inning. And that'll bring up Justin Hawkins. Climbing the ladder in up, up in the zone, getting uh, Wilkie to swing through this. Just a hard fastball, and now you see the effects of velocity. When you have a guy who's bringing it up there 95 miles per hour, like Chapman has the potential to do, you have to get started early. You potentially could swing out of balls outside of the strike zone. It's just a hard throwing pitching staff. You're right, they have some guys who are talented. They have plus stuff, they're challenging these hitters. 1-0 pitch to Hawkins. He struck out in the second, but his double in the fourth. Started that Clemson run that got them three runs. 1-0 pitch, take it inside, 2-0. Theodosio is on deck, the number nine hitter. Swing and a miss, two and one. Hawkins, Hawkins will swing in to do some damage on this pitch, 2-0. When you get a guy throwing this hard, you could potentially do too much. You don't have to do more than you have to do. You just need to put the barrel on the ball. You don't have to hit it 500 feet. You just don't need to hit it, hit it hard. Fouled it off. It makes it two and two. Again, a good pitch that Hawkins could handle. Still up in the zone. It's the hardest pitch to hit, that high fastball. There's an art about pitching high in the zone. Whenever you throw that hard, you have the over-the-top release. You can get a lot of guys to swing through that high heater. Two balls, two strikes. Drives it into center field for a base hit. His second base hit of the afternoon. Comes with two away. This is a good piece of hitting right here. A hanging breaking ball up in the zone. Remember, you've got a guy who speed his bat up. And you leave that slider up in the zone. It's almost inevitable that he's going to hit it. Especially when you're throwing hard. There's not much velocity differential between your fastball and your breaking ball. You throw it over the plate. The guy's on time. He's going to hit that ball out in front. Great piece of hitting right there by Hawkins. He's made a lot of adjustments since his first at bat. Taking advantage of the opportunity of getting the start today. Pitch is in the dirt, and Hawkins is in scoring position. He makes it to second. Wild pitch. That is the first for Chapman, but the fifth on the afternoon for South Carolina. And there's no hesitation by these base runners. Once they see the catcher Cullen drop to his knees on the ground, they're taking off. They're challenging him. And it's difficult whenever you have balls bouncing in front of the plate to smother that ball, pick it up, and throw a guy out at second base, especially when there's no hesitation. Whenever they're taking off right when they see you go to the ground. So that changes things. Now you've got a runner in scoring position with two out for Teodosio. In a three-run ball game. Could it be big? And your adjustment from T.O. right now is to swing at strikes. He's had a tendency of chasing this pitch up in the zone. You know Chapman, he likes to climb that ladder, change your eyesight. You really want to make him come to you. Throw that ball over over the plate. Swing it strikes. Clemson four for ten with runners in scoring position so far. South Carolina is one for seven. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Pops it up right side. Olsen coming after it. 
Says he's got it. Now struggles a little bit, but pulls it in right on the foul line, and that's going to be the inning. Tigers got a hit, but nothing across. We're through five at Doug Kingsmore. Clemson up 6-3. Top of the sixth inning, Clemson leading South Carolina 6-3. The Tigers had a 6-0 lead, but then T.J. Hopkins with a three-run homer to cut that lead in half, and that makes a, a count of 6-3. I want to take a moment here as we take a look at some of the highlights, and of course, Clemson got on the board early on. Cromwell with that long drive to make it one nothing. That was in the first inning. The Tigers just kept pouring it on with two runs in the third, three more in the fourth. And again, they looked like they had this thing in control. But then a three-run shot by Hopkins, and just like that, an inning ago, it's a six-three game. As we're here in the sixth inning, Fred Cunningham and Kyle Parker are with you. I want to take a moment, by the way, to talk about a great program that's happening right here at Clemson, the Tiger Trust Program. It's an opportunity for Clemson athletes who leave school early for the opportunity to play professional sports like you did with baseball, the chance to come back and earn a degree. And you're a part of this program. A lot of baseball players are. There's a lot of guys that are taking advantage of this program. And hats off to Clemson for allowing former student athletes who go on and, and leave college early to pursue a professional career to come back and finish their degree. You have uh, Ben Paulson, Mark Davidson on the coaching staff right now who, who are both in classes finishing up uh, their school. Bill Spires, along with uh, other people, obviously me. And, uh, you know, it's just a, a great program. Helps a lot of guys out. We saw Tree Rollins. I mean, think about it. Tree Rollins dates back to the 70s, and we saw him get his degree recently. 41 players or former student athletes are taking part of this program. So far, 30 have. You see Terry Allen, who played in the late 80s and in the 90s. Roscoe Crosby, who was here for a couple of years. Keith Jennings, Terrell McIntyre, who is part of the staff. There's Bill Spires. He's is, is a white Clemson hat right there. I mean, it's just a great program. And, you know, it is unique in college athletics, and we're talking about this so much especially in basketball with players coming to college maybe for one year. But if you have the opportunity to go the pro, it's, this is the best of both worlds. And it benefits everyone. A lot of guys who have the opportunity to learn a lot of things in professional baseball and, and come back and, and kind of relay that message uh, to, to younger kids, get around the game, share their knowledge. And the Clemson Tigers here as we... Start the sixth inning, have changed pitchers. Spencer Strider is in. You saw his numbers on the season. He's a freshman. Looks like his cleat got caught up right there. Seems to be all right. Spencer Strider, a guy who can go deep in the game, a middle relief type guy, but he has plus stuff. Just a young guy, but, you know, throws with velocity. That's a good breaking pitch. You can also see that Jordan Green has come in at second. Jonah Bride leading things off for the Gamecocks here in the sixth inning. One for two on the day with a double. Takes that for a called strike. One and two. Jordan Green, a defensive replacement for Justin Hawkins, who had a good day at the plate. The guy who hasn't been getting too many at bats. But steps up, goes two for three, hits a ball hard. There's some balls hard. That one in the dirt, it's two and two. Clemson six runs on eight hits with an error. Gamecocks three runs, six hits, no error. Of course, that home run, the three-one shot, is the big one for South Carolina that brought on all three runs by T.J. Hopkins back in the fifth. Spencer Shredder's pumping it up right now, 95 mile per hour fastball. A little adrenaline out there on the mound. One's inside off the little chin music, not intentional, but uh, still had to get out of the way there to fill the count up at three and two. Bride struck out in the second, he doubled in the fourth. It's a ball, so he's aboard. Bride able to hold up on this check swing. Draw the walk. Waited for the appeal. And it looks like he did. Just hold, held that bat barrel back just enough. So the Gamecocks again get the leadoff man aboard. 
And bring up Jacob Olson. He's over two so far. Olson drives it. This is going to drop for a base hit. And it's going to be a chance at extra bases. Olson will come in standing up at second in South Carolina. Now has runners at second and third. Nobody out. Olsen jumps on this one and drives it to the right center field gap. He's had good swings today. Hit a ball hard in the first inning, or second inning, excuse me, to the right fielder, but stays with that approach. Doesn't try to do too much. And a strong kid hitting that in the gap, stand up double. So that brings up Carlos Cortez in a big time situation. You can see his numbers on the season so far. Batting 200 with runners in scoring position. What a great chance here for South Carolina. Grounds it. It will go to Williams. Williams will take it unassisted. Bryan will score on the play, and that makes it a 6-4 game. And that's one of the most unselfish of bats in baseball, especially Cortez, a guy who is talented. But when you have a runner on third base and second base, you move the runner over. So now you have a runner on third, drive a run in just by hitting that ground ball to the right side. Putting the ball in play for the little things that make the game go around. You just want to help your team win, especially when you're struggling. A guy, Cortez, who has a lot of accolades, has experienced a lot of success, off to a slow start, making a terrific play in left field, then an unselfish at bat, getting it done early, driving a run in, advancing that runner over to third. Now there's one out, runner in scoring position. All the guy has to do now, Rose, put the ball in play. There's Olsen at third. Row the number nine hitter. He's reached twice in the third on an error by Higginbotham and then singled in the fifth. And Clemson at one point led this game 6 0. But the Gamecocks have battled back. Took a big cut at it. One and one. And leadoff walks will always come back to haunt you. Putting that guy on first base. You have to make him earn it. Strider taking his time. The one one. Swing and a miss. One and two. So off speed pitch away. It's like a slider. Good depth on this slider. See, so just drop right off the table. One out in the top of the six. Gamecocks already have one in. And have another runner right there at third. One ball, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Down goes Rowe, and there's two away. That's a big strikeout right there. One out, runner on third base. Any ball in play is pretty much going to score a run, especially with the middle infield playing back. Schreider gets that strikeout, throws his breaking ball for strikes, gets ahead in the count with his heater. It's what he has to do to be successful. It's nice to see him bounce back. So that brings up Noah Campbell. He's two for three on the day. Yeah, that bunt single, just that perfect bunt single in the third, and then singled cleanly in the fifth. Inside for a ball. We have a two-run ball game right now. Things are a little different. It's all about clutch hitting. You don't want to leave these runners on base. You need to get this guy in from third. Popped it up. Out of play. Makes it one and one. Your mindset of Strider, this Clemson pitching staff, is you just want to go after him right now. You don't want to mess around and end up in a situation where you're pitching to the middle part of this order. Swing and a miss. One and two. That's a well-located fastball. Inner half of the plate. And that's the art of pitching up in the zone. You have to locate it just perfectly right at, right below the letters. It looks so good. A little higher probably lays off of that. A little lower, it's right in the hitting zone. 
Strider with a chance to get out of the inning. One two pitch. It's high for a ball. It's two and two. He tried to climb up in the zone again there. That one just got away from him. Now you're in a position where you have to throw a strike, especially you know with the two, three, four hitters coming up in this lineup. Two balls, two strikes. It's in the dirt. Wilkie stays in front of it. Now it's a full count. And that's why Wilkie's going to stay in this lineup. Regardless if he hits or not, he's a sponge back there. Just saved a run. Run saved are huge. The psyche of the pitcher saved. It's just a, a stress relief when you know if you accidentally spike one, Wilkie's going to keep it in front of him. Clemson fans making some noise. They want to see if they can get out of here having only given up one run. And it's going to be a ball four and a walk. Campbell's two out walk. And now that brings up Hopkins. And the last time he was at the plate, it was the same situation. There were two on, and he knocked it well out of the ballpark. That made it six to three at that point. Hancocks have already scored once here in the top of the sixth, and it's six four. And this is a situation that you don't want to be in. You don't want to get those free passes. And now you have to pitch to these guys in the middle of the order. For both teams, both lineups, these are guys that are gonna hurt, that are gonna hurt you. Hopkins is a 286 hitter with two out on the season. Big swing. That ball low, it's 0-1. It's an off-speed pitch right here. It's like slider down in the zone. Oh, one pitch. Swing and a miss. Oh, and two. Another off speed pitch. Outer half of the plate right here. If you're Hopkins. Great approach last to bat, and you drove that ball. Right now, all you need to do is hit a single. It's tough to do. Sometimes those homers have carryover. You want to just keep repeating that. It's an awesome image to have in your head. But at the end of the day, singles work. Stick to what's simple. O2 2 with two outs. Swing and a miss. Strikes out Hopkins, but not before the Gamecocks score another run on a hit. One man left. We go to the bottom of the six. Clemson six, USC four. Top of the order coming up for Clemson here in the bottom of the six with the Tigers in front of the Gamecocks. It is six to four in the top of the order. It also would include Patrick Cromwell. We're going to talk about him in a moment, but the Gamecocks have made a change on the mound. The junior right-hander, Eddie Demurius, will come in. You see his record on the season so far, 1-0, a nice ERA of 1.69, but more walks than strikeouts so far on the season. He's going to face the top of this Clemson order. You got Davidson, Beer, Cromwell. Here's Logan Davidson. Flew out in the first, walked and scored in the third, and knocked in a run in the fourth with a single. First pitch from Demurius. Outside for a ball. Davison just seems so calm and collected at the plate. He's been selective these last couple games, and there he drives one deep. Rips it for a home run for right field, and the Gamecocks, who closed within two, are now down by three. It's 7-6 Clemson. 7-4 Clemson, excuse me. And there you see the pop from Logan Davidson. Has a sweet swing from the left side of the plate. Hits this one well up over the batting cages in right field. First that's going to be relieving for him. First home run of the season for Davidson. So after scoring the first six runs and then watching South Carolina score four in a row, he gets the sledgehammer waiting for him at 
home plate. It's now a 7-4 game. And you almost saw this one coming. Whenever you have a guy who just continues to put together good at bats, not swing at bad pitches, we obviously know he's Logan Davis is super talented, but you know he's going to be selective. Key to hitting is just swinging at pitches that you can drive. He's patient, stayed within himself, put a good swing on a good pitch, and something good happened. Here's Seth Beer. Flew out to left field in the first, struck out in the third. Big defensive shift that we can show you right there. The beer gets played this way a lot. And the shift is all dependent on locating the pitches. You pitch to the shift. They're going to try to throw Seth Beer hard and in, maybe soft and away. Give him something that he is going to hit on the ground and pull. Gamecocks intentionally walked him back in the fourth. Two balls, one strike. There's a drive. It's going to go in for a base hit right in front of Jacob Olson. Second hit of the inning for Clemson. This ball's hit right on the screws, a fastball right over the plate. You can't let Seth Beer get his arms extended or he's going to hit something hard. You have to come in tight, keep his arms close to his body. And here's Patrick Cromwell, and what a day he's had in the first inning, this solo home run that gave Clemson a 1-0 lead. Then in the fourth, he has this single that brought in two more runs, three hits on the afternoon. Cromwell's been hot, driving in runs, hitting behind Seth Beer. Teams are challenging him, and he's making them pay. Shows bunt, takes the called strike. For how he's swinging it right now, please bunt. <laughs> if I'm the opposing team. Demarius low for a ball. It's one and one. Demarius has some, some good depth on that breaking ball. A 12-6 curveball right there. He's got to be super careful. Obviously, he knows that Patrick Cromwell's he's comfortable at the plate, and he's, he's been feeling good today. Taking for a strike, one and two. You can hear the Tiger fans had a mild disagreement on the call. And this is a good job by calling the catcher right here. A lot of times you see guys turn their glove over. And that's an indicator to the umpire that it's outside of your frame. It's probably a ball. Catching that ball with your elbow out and your hand vertical or horizontal like that gives the appearance of a strike. It's, it's not easy to do. It's an art as a catcher. Rounded the short. Chance for two. And they get it. Nice job by the Gamecocks. It's a Taylor May double stoke. play. Patrick Cromwell is human. He does get out. Right to Stokes. He took it himself. Over the Tolbert at first. So with two away, Chris Williams will come up. Williams has had a big day. Singled in the first. Knocked in a run with a single in the third and walked in the fourth. He's had good at bats. Whenever I watch Chris Williams' bats, I just want him to swing at pitches down in the zone. He does a lot of damage on those low ball. He's a low ball hitter. He gets in trouble whenever he starts swinging at pitches elevated. Demurius with a 1 0. Popped it up right side. little confusion for a moment, but Jacob Olson calls off row and brings it in. But Logan Davidson's solo shot stretches the lead. We're done with six. Clemson up on USC, seven to four. A great day for this series capper at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Clemson up seven to four on South Carolina at the top of the seventh inning. What's ahead for these two ball clubs? We start with USC. After today, they've got a game in Charlotte on Tuesday night. They'll play Appalachian State. A night later, they got North Carolina A&T before a series next weekend against Princeton. And then they got a ball game against Harvard. Meanwhile, for Clemson, they will play Wofford here coming up on Tuesday night. 
Uh, we'll have that ball game for you here. Then on Wednesday, they've got a game against Michigan State back at Flora Field before the first conference series of the season when Georgia Tech comes here starting on Friday. Top of the seventh inning, Madison Stokes leading things off for South Carolina. Reached a couple of times on walks. Struck out once. That's a drive right side, but it's going to go out of play. And it's one and one. Strider continues in relief for the Tigers. Who have that three-run lead. Brown ball. Davidson comes up, throws it to Williams, and there's one away. All speed pitch here by Strider. Silk just beats this one right into the ground. Terrific play by Davidson. Makes it look easy out there. So with one away, the first baseman LT Tolbert comes up. Grounded out to the pitcher. Grounded out to the first baseman. And in the fifth, he grounded out to second. Tolbert's had a tough day. He's had a, a tough matchup with uh, Higginbotham, the left on left and the big curveball. Probably sees Strider a, a little better, but it's challenging, especially when you have, have a guy who's a little deceiving and has that big breaking ball, the left on left breaking ball. Fouls it off left side. One and one. See the flags right now. Actually, we got one stuck in a tree. Drives it right side. Will it drop for a base hit? No, it won't. It's right at Seth Beer, and there's two away. Tober just ran out of bat on this one. Hit this one off the end of the bat. Off-speed pitch over the plate, but low. Located well. It's a soft line drive out to right field. So that brings up the catcher, Chris Cullen. He's over three on the day. Not a whole lot of a wind has really been a big factor, at least today so far. We had a little bit of a breeze coming in off Lake Hartwell off of right field earlier, but uh, a little bit of a crossing wind, but nothing too serious right now. There's a drive, and it's right at Cromwell. That's his second great play at third on the day to end the seventh for South Carolina. A 1 2 3 inning for the Tigers. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Clemson up on USC at 7-4. Take a look right now at Ben Paulson over there for the Tigers, just off the first base coach and uh, another member of the Tiger Trust program that we've talked about. And in case you missed our conversation a little bit earlier, it's the program that's started at Clemson in 2015 that invites former athletes who left school early to go after a professional sports career to come back and finish their degrees. And so far, 41 have taken advantage of it and 30 have finished. First pitch from Demurius to start the seventh inning to Robert Jolly is in there for a ball. It's 1-0. Ben Paulson's a guy that a lot of these players can resonate with. Pretty young guy, but he's had a lot of experience. Uh, his dad, coach at Winthrop TR, we, we played him the other week, mentioned talking about him. But an aspiring baseball coach and has a lot of knowledge of the game, a, a good feel for the game, and any college program in the upcoming years would be, would be lucky to have him as an assistant. Two balls and a strike. The count on Jolly. Takes it for a strike. It's two and two. It's a well located fastball down in the zone, outer half of the plate. 2 2 pitch. Rounded it. Rowe throws it over to Tolbert. One away in the Tigers' seventh. Smooth play by Rowe right there. It's a tough angle. Shaded towards first base, running back to his right. Just makes it look easy. Flawless, relaxed play. That breaks up Drew Wharton. 0 for 3 in the game so far. 
fly out, ground out, and struck out. Low for a ball. It's a plus slider right there. Good take by Wharton. The thing had some bite on it. Wharton batting 250 on the season, but he's got four home runs. Taken for a strike. He goes back to the slider, dropping it in right over the plate. A lot of these guys, they have different speeds to their slider. They have ones that they, they like to throw for strikes, and they have their out pitch, which they snap a little harder. Fouled sharply down the left field line. They'll make it one and two. And this would be the time that you get the, the snap slider, the hard slider down in the zone that will probably break down in the dirt. And you see the, the slider earlier in the count that you're obviously just wanting to throw a strike, get it over the plate. You're not going to break it as hard. Now you want to put them away. If you think you can get them to swing through the slider, you're going to throw it aggressive with velocity, snap it pretty hard. Grounds it to Rowe. Rowe to Tolbert, and there's two away. So Kyle Wilkie comes up with two out. He struck out a couple of times. Also grounded out to short. Of course, if you've told me before with, with Wilkie, anything you get on offense out of Wilkie is just a bonus because of what he does defensively in handling the pitchers. And he's been driving in some runs. He's been getting comfortable still early in the season. But yeah, you're right. He just needs to manage this pitching staff. Keep playing good defensively and be competitive at the plate. He knocked in two runs yesterday in Greenville, and that was able to give the Tigers a little bit of cushion. It was 3-1, and they knocked in two to make it 5-1, which wound up being the final. This is a nasty breaking ball right here. Plus pitch, you see the depth on that breaking ball. 0-2 no pitch, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Demurius and company. We are through seven at Doug Kingsmore Stadium. Clems it up on the Gamecocks. It's seven to four. Top of the eighth inning, Clemson has a 7-4 lead on the Gamecocks, and the Tigers have a new pitcher. It's their third of the day. Carson Spires, the right-hander, has come in. You look at his numbers on the season. This is his fifth appearance. He's pitched five and two-thirds. No runs allowed. He's got eight strikeouts to just one walk. Carson Spires features a two-seam fastball that's going to run down towards his arm side into a right-handed hitter and a slider. He's gonna throw strikes. A ground ball pitcher, he needs to stay down in the zone to be successful, establish the strike on the inner half of the plate. Jonah Bry will lead things off here for USC. He had a double back in the fourth. Spires first pitch taken for a ball. Right, batting 500 on the season as a leadoff hitter. Pops it up to the right side. It'll be out of play. And it'll make it one and one. Spires got, got some sink to his ball. You see that kind of three quarters release. Ball's going to run down to a right handed hitter. Your approach as a hitter is to get a ball up, something that's going to fall down into the strike zone. One one pitch is out inside for a ball. It's two and one. Pitch is outside. So you see Spires just staying in the stretch. A lot of guys, especially bullpen guys, they just keep it simple. They feel comfortable in the stretch. They'll stay in it regardless if there's runners on base or not. Called strike. Full count three and two. When you hear the name Spires involved with Clemson, yep. He's just the latest from a 
long line of Spires who have been stars for the Tigers. 3-2 pitch coming. Grounded. Takes a hop off second base, but a nice play by Green to get it across. And there's one away. And Jordan Green's a solid defender. See Monty going with the decision to take Hawkins out. You have the defensive replacement, Green. And that's about as difficult a hop as you can get off the base. Just reaction skills. Green can really help this team out defensively. A guy who's played a lot in the past may have a, a little bit of a different role right now, but an unselfish guy who the coaching staff can trust, especially on the field at second base. Jacob Olson takes first pitch for a ball. He doubled back in the sixth. I think Olson's put together some terrific at bats. He's hit the ball hard, has one hit to show for it, but not a lot of at bats entering this game. So has had a good approach. Seems like he wants to get the ball out over the plate. He can drive it to the opposite field. The 1-1 one, one pitch. There's a drive left side. This could be trouble, and it's going to go off the wall. And Olsen, another good at bat for him. He comes in standing up with a one-out double. Carson Spires has to stay down in the zone. Whenever that ball gets up towards the belt, it just falls right into the hitting zone. A sinker ball pitcher who has the two-seam fastball, you want to get ground balls. You have to start that around the thighs, let your fastball run down to around the knees. You want to be able to establish the inside part of the plate. Once you're pitching up and over the plate, that's when those guys get hit. So here's Cortez who grounded out the last time out that brought in a run though. It was a, as you called it, an unselfish at bat as Monty Lee is making his way out to the mound and the Tigers are gonna change pitchers very quickly here. They're gonna be bringing in now Ryan Huggins. And so Carson Spires will leave with one out and a man aboard. With the Tigers up seven to four. Take a quick break here at Doug Kingsmore Stadium in the top of the eighth. Ryan Huggins in now, in relief for the Tigers here in the eighth inning. The left-hander, his numbers on the young season, two appearances, pitch one total inning with a strikeout and no walks. He comes in with Olsen in scoring position at second after the double with one out and about to face Carlos uh, Cortez. Clemson jumped out to a 6-0 lead. Gamecocks got as close as 6-4. It's now 7-4. There is Jake Higginbotham, who started this game. Had a pretty good outing. Now he wants to see if his team can hang on to this lead and win this series. It would be the fourth straight time Clemson would have won the series. Monty Lee electing to go with a left-on-left -left matchup. You have a three-run ball game in the eighth inning. Gamecox got as close as two, but then a Logan Davidson home run. Pushed the lead back out to three. And despite the slow start, Cortez is a guy who can handle the bat at the plate. All strike. It's a big sweeping breaking ball right here. This is what you have to do, come in out of the pen, throw your off speed for strikes. Just gets more crucial as the game progresses and you get down to the last innings. Inside, called strike, 0-2. Drops this one in there again. Looks like it just breaks right over the inside part of the plate. O2 pitch outside. The ball gets away. And Olsen will advance. It's a wild pitch. But now Olsen stands at third with one out.
Now you have a guy on third base with one out. Cortez doesn't need a hit to drive this run in. Looks like the infield's playing back. As long as he just puts the ball in play, he's going to produce a run, an RBI. And these mistakes will always come back to haunt you. You see South Carolina being haunted by a couple, you know, pass balls, letting runners advance. You don't want to have any unforced errors. You want to control everything that you can control. Another pitch in the dirt, but Wilkie stays in front of it. Riley Gilliam is in the Clemson bullpen right now. But all eyes are on Olsen at third with Cortez at the plate. 2-2 Two -two count coming. Pops it out of play. Stays 2-2. Two and two. The kind of at bat you were talking about just to get it in play to get the run across. That's exactly what he did back in the sixth to bring a run in. And you want to simplify the game, especially when you have a slow start to the season. Start thinking about it in terms of what can I do to help the team win. Cortez, great defensive play earlier in the game. Advanced the runner. Drove a run in with a ground ball to the right side. You know, 0 for 3 today. But all you want to do is be productive. Going out and putting a lot of pressure on yourself to, to get three hits and, you know, increase your batting average is kind of unrealistic. You just want to simplify things, especially right now. You want to get a hit, but all you really do or need to do is just drive the ball, hit the ball on the ground, you get a run in. Gets the ball on the ground. Nice job by Green to knock it down. Davidson comes in from behind him, but it's going to be an infield hit. And that's going to bring Olsen across. It's now a 7-5 to five game. That's exactly what you were talking about. He even got the benefit of being able to get the hit out of it. Yeah, it looks like Jordan Green slips right here, but exactly right. You just want to get that run home. You have a three-run ball game. You want to generate runs with two innings left. It looks like Jordan Green got tripped up. Cortez benefited from that. But sometimes when you're not on base, you'll take anything. First base almost seems unfamiliar. We've experienced that one too many times. Like just getting over there is a relief. You don't really care how it happens. So the single by Cortez brings in a run. It's now seven to five, and the Tigers will make another pitching change. So Huggins will leave, and we'll talk about our new pitcher in a moment. Eighth inning, Clemson up on USC, but it's seven to five. New pitcher for the Tigers, it's the junior, number 44, Riley Gilliam. You can see his numbers on the season, a right-hander. He's appeared in four games, has a win and a couple of saves as well. A 169 ERA, 11 strikeouts to three walks. Comes into a situation with the Tigers up by two. It's seven to five. There's one away here in the top of the eighth. Cortez is at first after the RBI single, and Justin Rowe is coming to the plate. Monty electing to go with the closer in the eighth inning. Riley is the established closer on this pitching staff. Now he's going to face the bottom half of this order and, and, and potentially the, the top three hitters. you got Hopkins, Stokes, and Tolbert coming up, guys who can drive the ball. They're in a two-run ball game right now. The mindset has to be that Riley's going to finish this thing off. So look for him to finish this eighth inning, potentially go into the ninth inning. And Matt Williams is going to pinch hit here in the eighth inning. If it sounds familiar, it should. Williams pinch hit on Friday night. His team was down by a run at the time, 2-1. to one. Hit that home run that tied the game at 2, which led to the Gamecocks then getting that run in the bottom of the ninth to win game 1. Williams, before that at bat, had three career home runs and 165 plate appearances. First pitch from Gillian is inside for a ball. Mark Kingston said he liked the matchup on Friday night. That move certainly paid off. Williams started the game yesterday at first in Greenville, had a hit. So he's two for four in the series. 1-0 pitch, taken inside. 2-0. And, oh. and like you mentioned, Williams has some pop off the bench. Left-handed hitter can drive the ball out of the ballpark. You got Riley Gillum. 
plus breaking ball, can run that velocity up around 95, 97, but he has to throw strikes and get ahead in this count. There's a strike call, it's two and one. And that's a good pitch to hit right there. A 2-0 pitch with a guy who has good breaking stuff. You want to be aggressive in those hitters counts. Evens things up at two and two. Goes right back to it. This one may have been off the plate, just nibbling the inside part of the plate. Fastball right there. And now you don't know what's coming. You know that Riley has that plus breaking ball in his pocket and throw it whenever. Grounded. Green for one, flips it over. They try to turn two, and they get it. The double play gets Clemson out of the inning, but the Gamecocks pick up a run to close it to a two-run gap. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Tigers seven, South Carolina five. A look at Mark Kingston right now going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Tigers hoping to hold off South Carolina as that team has really come back in this one, trailing 6 nothing at one point. Gamecocks have nibbled away. It's now 7-5. to five. Jordan Green, who came in for defense at second base, makes his first trip to the plate. Adam Renwick is in. He's going to move to uh, second base for South Carolina. And Matt Williams will stay in after pinch hitting at first. Green from Fort Mill. Nice turn by Green, the bottom half of the top half of the eighth inning. His job right now is to just get on base. You're really playing for one run through the Clemson Tigers right now. You want a little insurance. You want to manufacture that run any way you can. 1-1 one, one pitch. Takes it for a ball. It's 2-1. and one. So Tolbert moved over to second. And there's Williams still at first as he fouls it off. Two two pitch on the way to Green here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Check straight swing and it's going to be called strike. So down it goes Green. We'll take another look. And that's that slider low and away, outer half of the plate, well located. It's a strikeout pitch right there. Jordan Green just couldn't hold his swing up. Teodosio now will come up. The center fielder is 0 for 3 on the day with a couple of strikeouts. Takes first pitch for a called strike. Demurius in relief for South Carolina. Swing and a miss. It's 0-2. Demurius has a good feel for his slider right now. Steady diet to all these hitters. It's been changing velocity on it. You know, the sharpness of the break. Not a lot of fastballs right now. Good job by Calvin to stay in front of that one. One ball and two strikes. Top of the order, about to come up for the Tigers. Davidson is on deck. Swing and a miss, third strike out of the day for Teodosio. Second strike out of the inning and Logan Davidson will come to the plate. This is a good pitch right here. Demarius has been getting ahead in the count with this slider. He has a good feel for it and then obviously breaks it a little harder. Once he's ahead, he's at liberty to, to be able to be aggressive with that. He throws it down in the zone. It's a tough pitch to hit. You may want to make the adjustment to jump on that early if you think he's just throwing a, a slider to get over the plate. 
you may want to start swinging at that, but has a good feel ever since, uh, you know, the home run earlier by Davidson. It's gone back to that breaking ball, has settled down. The 1-0 pitch. Inside, 2-0. Davidson walked in the third, RBI single in the fourth, and his solo home run of the sixth looks really big right now for Clemson. Gives him, for the moment, a two-run lead. 3-0. Davidson has walked seven times in the series. Rio pitch. Take it for a strike. It's three and one. Davidson's taking all the way right here. Fastball pretty much splits the plate. But I would have to think he's going to go back with his breaking ball right now. He's been really comfortable with it. Walks for the eighth time in the series. Second time today. One out walk brings up Seth Beer. You can tell Davidson's just in the zone. He's been really patient at the plate, driving a home run last to bat, but taking his walks, sticking to his approach. A single, a walk, and a run scored for Beer today. Also has a strikeout. Now Chris Cohen will go out to Talk to Demurius for a moment. As you can see, Gamecocks have some activity. It's Carmen Majinski, freshman right-hander. This is the benefit of Patrick Cromwell playing well as an opposing coach. You have to decide whether you're gonna go attack Seth Beer or you're gonna pitch to Cromwell who's had continuous good at-bats, drove in a lot of runs today. Cromwell's had a big day. Solo home run in the first, singled in the third, knocked in two runs with a single in the fourth. Greg Street, the home plate umpire, goes out and finally breaks things up. So here comes Seth Beer with two out. Davidson at first. Pitch outside for a ball. Be sure to stay with us at the end of the game because we're going to stay on the air because really something special that happens in this series is that a most valuable player for each team is named. You're going to see that presentation that's going to come up at the conclusion of this game. 1-0 pitch to Beer. It's in the dirt. That's going to let Davidson get into scoring position at second. Wild pitch. Another one for the Gamecocks. They've really struggled with that today. This changes your mindset when facing Seth Beer. Now that you have first base open and there's already a runner in scoring position, you can put him on first, pitch around him. Probably not an intentional walk, but you don't have to give in. You don't have to challenge him, him, him as much. Just be fine. You can throw your breaking balls even if it's a hitter's count. You don't really have a lot to lose if you put him on. Let's see, Majinski continue to warm up, but... Right now it's on Demurius, and they are going to, for the second time today, intentionally walk Seth Beer. But this is for a chance to pitch to Patrick Cromwell, who's got three hits, including a home run. He's knocked in three runs of a day. So Beer goes to first, and here comes Cromwell. And I don't think it's any surprise for these guys hitting behind Seth Beer. Everyone knows how highly touted he is. He can do damage. You don't want to let a guy like that beat you. He's proven it over and over again that he's going to come through in clutch moments. Now it's someone else's turn. It's just the name of the game. Gamecocks are going to make a pitching change and we're going to take a break as well. 
Bottom of the eighth inning, Clemson leads South Carolina 7-5. The new pitcher for South Carolina is a freshman right-hander, Carbon Majinski. He comes in, as you take a look at his numbers on the year, a couple of appearances, 0-1, 5-4-0 ERA, five strikeouts and two walks. He comes in with a couple of runners aboard for the Tigers. Davidson at second, Seth Beer just intentionally walked to first with two out. You're going to face Patrick Cromwell, who's had a big day. You're right. Patrick Cromwell's been seeing the ball, putting together great at-bats. Home run to lead the game off. Also drove in two runs, single to right field. There's Patrick, who knocked in two runs yesterday. Had the base hit that knocked in a couple of runs that proved to be the difference in the game. Might be one of the Leading contenders for that award I was talking about, the, the two MVP awards are named after two longtime sports information legends here, if you know this area. The late great Bob Grab Bradley for Clemson and the late great Tom Price for South Carolina. I was lucky enough to sit into a couple of discussions with those two guys, and when I say discussion, that meant I didn't say anything. I just listened to them. Listen and learn a lot. That is a wise piece of advice. <laughs> when you're around people who know a lot more than you, I've always tended to try to be quiet. <laughs> Smile and nod. It'll get you far. Yeah. So here comes Cromwell. He's a 500 hitter with two out. Let's see if that number holds up. In addition to what he's done at the play, he's had a couple of beautiful plays at third today. It's become comfortable. It's been a staple in the lineup due to early success. But it's nice to see him playing with confidence and letting his ability show. Takes the pitch inside for a ball. This is a big at bat in this game. You have to be really careful. If you put Cromwell on via walk, it's not the worst thing in the world. Drives it right side, but he knocks it right at Tolbert, who's able to get the force at second. And there's nothing across for Clemson in the eighth. We will go to the top of the ninth inning. Clemson leads South Carolina 7-5. Top of the ninth inning, Clemson leading South Carolina 7-5, to five, and the winner of this game in this series is going to make a difference in the Palmetto Series. This is an all-sports competition between Clemson and South Carolina. You can see the Clemson points so far this year, scored by the football victory, the win in men's basketball, men's soccer, and golf. So Clemson right now has a chance with uh, men's tennis and also academics to tie it, although there's some other variables so that uh, could factor into it. But uh, right now, Clemson trying to see if they can get out of this ninth inning, but it is going to be a tough chore for Riley Gilliam. He is the Clemson closer, but he will face the top of the Gamecock lineup, and it starts with Noah Campbell, the DH. A couple of singles and a run today. First pitch is in there for a strike. Riley really wants this one after giving up the save Friday night. It's a little redemption right here. Outside for a ball, one and one. Campbell laid down that beautiful bun in the third to reach. Singled in the fifth, walked in the sixth. Grounded. This is Green. Bobbles it. And the leadoff man is aboard. And Campbell can move down the line. It's exactly what he wanted to do, was just get on base. Now you're going to have the potential tying run coming at bat with guys who can hit for power. This is a difficult play for Jordan Green. Backhand with a guy who can move down the line. So that brings up T.J. Hopkins. Hopkins with two hits today, including that three-run homer in the fifth. 
Clemson was cruising along with a 6-0 lead at that point. That made it 6-3, and here we are in the ninth. He's the tying run at the plate. First pitch is taken for a strike. It's always interesting, Fred. You never know what's going to happen in the ninth inning. It's a breaking ball right there. You see good depth on this breaking ball. It's his plus pitch, his go-to pitch. Grounded off, foul. 0-2. Stokes is on deck. Facing the dangerous part of this Carolina lineup. Guys who could potentially hit a homer to tie this ball game up. Gamecocks have battled back in this one. Pitch is high. You think about it, at one point they had been, over two days, they had been outscored 11-1 to when it was 6-0. But look at how they've battled back with a chance to still win this game and win this series. Fouled off and still stays alive at 1-2. and two. And that's what makes this series beautiful, just the competition. No team is really ever out of it. You just respect, you know, the fight that they kept fighting. Who knows what's going to happen in this ninth inning. A challenge to get these guys in the middle of the order out for sure. The one-two pitch. It's outside, two and two. Game's coming up on about the three-hour mark. Swing and a miss, and there's one away. That was a filthy breaking ball right there. Doesn't get much better than this. Whenever you locate that curveball down in the zone, you're going to get a lot of swing and misses. So one away, and that'll bring up Madison Stokes, who's walked twice, struck out, and grounded out the short. But still batting 435 on the season. First pitch for a ball. And Riley will throw that breaking ball pretty much any count, especially to these middle of the order hitters. He mixes fastball, breaking balls, almost unpredictable what he's going to throw. He has a feel for both of them. Inside again, 2-0. and oh. Clemson's closer came on in the eighth. So far has thrown 16 pitches, as you can see. The 2-0. -oh. Fouled back to the screen, 2-1. and one. When you have a guy throwing this hard with two plus pitches, you have to hit the pitches you can. That there was a great pitch to drive. You're not going to see too many pitches to hit with a guy like, you know, Riley Gillum, who has his deep depth curveball, has a high velocity fastball. You have to take advantage of every opportunity you get. Called strike. 91 mile an hour on the gun. This is very well located. Now it's 2-2. Two -two. You've seen his fastball, you've seen his curveball, you're just battling, you want to get it to the next guy. Two-two pitch. Fouled it to stay alive. You have to have a special mentality as a closer. There's so much riding on every single pitch. Maximum effort. Unlike a starter who you're going to take some off and you kind of wear the storm, go through the whole game. You have to be able to deal with pressure. Just misses that curveball off the plate right there. That's a very good take by Stokes. That's not an easy pitch to lay off. Didn't miss by much. And they appeal down the first base side. So now it's a full count, three and two with one out. And this is the type of situation 
McGill can throw either his curveball or fastball. A lot of guys have one pitch that they're totally confident that they can get over the plate. Riley usually has two. It's a terrific at bat right there by Stokes, going deep into the count, not being overly aggressive. So the Gamecocks now have two on with one out in the ninth. And here comes LT Tolbert. He's 0 for 4 on the day, has grounded out three times, flew out to right field back in the seventh. Similar to Seth Beer, Stokes is a guy that you don't want to let beat you. He's a guy that everyone knows can drive the ball out of the ballpark. You kind of pick your poison. You don't want to go down by the guys that you know are capable and have done it before. Pinch runner coming in for South Carolina. It's number four, Danny Blair. He's a junior. So he'll come on at first. From a defensive mentality, the guy on second base really doesn't mean anything. The tying run is at first. You don't want to let that guy advance and get into scoring position. Campbell with the lead at second. Pitch is taken for a strike. There's that deep breaking ball again. Down in the zone. You have to stay down in the zone with that breaking ball. You don't want to leave it hanging where they could potentially drive it to the outfield. Taking for a ball, it's one and one. Cullen, the catcher, is on deck. Drives it, center field. After it is Teodosio, he goes up to the fence, it's off the fence. One run will score. They will hold the runner at third. And it's now a 7-6 to six game. This ball's driven into the right center field gap. Teodosio couldn't quite get there. Collides with the fence. They relayed it in just quick enough. Good job by Seth Beer of getting this ball in. Terrific piece of hitting, getting a pitch that you can drive and not missing it. Gillum has terrific stuff. You don't get too many pitches to hit. Whenever you get a pitch you can put the bat on, you have to make it count. Tolbert drives this into the gap. Clutch hitting, that's the name of the game. The team who has the most clutch hit is ultimately going to win. Went to that wall hard and then Beer came up throwing. You know, a lot of, uh, at first they were signaling for Blair to come around and then the third base coach held him up. But Tolbert ripped that double. It's now a one-run game. That was a terrific job by Seth Beer. Playing that ball off the wall and getting it in just quick enough to keep the runner at third with a potential tying run. There may have been a play at the plate, I would assume, with maybe two outs. You, you chance it. it. It would have been bang, bang with the relay throw. Now there's one out. Sacrifice fly could score the, the tying run right now. And you also have the go-ahead run in scoring position. That brings up Chris Cullen. Now a one-run game. Lined up back, back in the seventh. He's 0 for 4 on the afternoon. First pitch is taken for a ball. Blair is at third. Tolbert is at second after the RBI double. Infield seems to be at normal depth right now. You have to go ahead run at second base. You can't bring your infielders in. Potentially give up that run. It looks like a sack fly to center field. Teodosios, his throw to the plate will be off the mark, and the Gamecocks are able to tie it, and then the ball gets away from Wilkie, and the runner advances to third. So now the go-ahead run is at third with two away. But the Gamecocks have now come all the way back, and they've tied this game at seven. And now you have that runner on third base tacks up and scores 
So all you need to do is put the ball in play. Teodosio running to his left. He has to slow down and try to throw back. It's a difficult play at home. The pass ball allows Tolbert to advance the third potential tying or go-ahead run at third base for the Gamecocks. So here's Jonah Bride with two outs. He has doubled in this game. Ball one. South Carolina has come a long way back in this one. The tide at seven. Pitch is taken for a ball. Two and zero. Oh. That pitch didn't miss by much. Fastball away. Maybe a hair off the plate. South Carolina has taken advantage of some Clemson mistakes. They've also came through with some clutch hits. Tie is 3-0. and oh. Jacob Olsen is on deck. And he walks on four pitches. So there's now runners at the corners with two out, top of the ninth, and a 7-7 game. Activity in the Clemson bullpen. Travis Marr, Matt Clark taking their pitches. So here's Jacob Olson. He has doubled his last two times up. And Jacob Olson has had some good at bats today. He's hit the ball hard. A scary guy if you kill him. You have to be aware. This guy's feeling it. He has a good idea about what he's doing at the plate. Pops it up. Calling forward is Cromwell in foul territory, and he pulls it in. But South Carolina scores twice in the top of the ninth to tie it. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth at Doug Kingsmore. We're tied at seven. Four, five, and six hitters up for Clemson in the bottom of the ninth inning in a tie game with South Carolina. It is seven to seven. And leading things off is Chris Williams. Williams has a couple of hits on the day, a single in the first, an RBI single in the third. He has also walked one time. First pitch is a strike for Majinski. And Chris Williams, probably the most dangerous hitter that's coming to bat this inning. Hit the ball out of the ballpark right now. Majinski's going to be really careful. He's not going to give in to Chris Williams. Not really a threat on the base pass, but can drive the ball, especially out of the ballpark. 1-1 one, one pitch taken. It's 2-1, two 2-1. To one, two one. This great rivalry series with a decisive game, of course it comes to the ninth inning. 2-1 pitch to Williams. Popped it up. Cohen is calling for it, waiting for it, and it's going to go just foul. Drifted just at the last second out. And that was a very hittable pitch. Chris Williams a little frustrated that he missed this one. A fastball that he knows he can drive. You're not going to see too many of these pitches, especially with these high-quality arms, guys coming in with you know hard-breaking balls and a lot of velocity. You have to get something over the plate that you can do some damage with. Gamecocks have made a lot of defensive changes here in the bottom of the ninth inning. 2-2 pitch to Williams. Off his wrists a little bit. Going to be foul. Carlos Cortez is now in right field. Hopkins is in left. Blair is now in center field. Tolbert has moved to shortstop. And Olsen is at second base. Two balls and two strikes is the count to Williams. 
in a 7-7 game in the bottom of the ninth. Popped it up. Right side. Coming underneath at center field. There'll be a battle. The two Gamecocks collide in the outfield, but they're able to make the catch. And there's one away. That was Blair coming in and colliding with Cortez, but they were able to make the grab, and there's one down. Lucky that this ball doesn't fall right here. A little communication error in the outfield is usually the center fielder's priority. When you got guys moving around different positions, it makes it a little difficult. You also notice the wind slightly blowing towards right field. The foul ball by Chris Williams blows back into the stands, and then this one kind of drifts towards Cortez and right field. First pitch to Robert Jolly was a ball that got away. Inside, 2-0. A little different approach from Jolly than Chris Williams. Chris Williams is a guy that you want to go up there and take three cuts and, and try to drive the ball potentially out of the ballpark. Jolly's probably going to slow things down. Now he just wants to get on first base. He may run into one, but not a guy who has the pop as, let's say, Chris Williams. Just needs to get on base, try to get into scoring position. 1-0 pitches inside, 2-0. and You saw Tolbert. He started at first. He moved to second. Excuse me, 3-0. and 3-0 at the count. But Tolbert has played first, second, and short. 3-0 pitch taken for a strike, 3-1. and one. Yeah, a guy who is versatile. This Gamecock coaching staff knows can play a lot of different positions. They're moving around. A lot of pivotal parts positions in the uh, defensive playing field. Inside for a ball, so the Tigers get Jolly aboard with the walk with one down. Now bring up Drew Wharton, who's 0 for 4 on the day, with a strikeout in the fifth. And it'll be interesting to see if they run for Jolly at first base. Looks like Monty's kind of hesitating on some kind of decision down there. You know, you have Wharton, who can drive the ball into the gap. You want to get this guy into scoring position so a single could potentially win you the game. Majinski's pitch. Popped it up right side. Chasing after it is Williams, but it will go out of play, and it's 0-1. This is a big at bat for Drew Wharton. Just needs to advance it to, to Wilkie. Had a big day yesterday. But your approach as a hitter now, just to keep the lineup moving. You don't want to put too much pressure on yourself of doing too much. Check swing. All for a strike, it's 0-2. And this is a, a dirty slider off the plate. Wharton couldn't quite hold up. Ball's in the dirt, but Jolly will hold at first. One and two. Good job by Cullen in keeping this ball in front. You want to keep that double play intact and also not let the winning run get into scoring position. The one-two lays off it. It's two and two. And if you're Robert Jolly at first base, you have to be anticipating this hard slider in the dirt. You need to do everything you can to get the second base. There's a shot right field. Back goes Olsen. He's to the wall, it's off the fence. Rounding third. There will be a play at the plate, hit for slide. And this game, and this series belongs to the Clemson Tigers. 8-7 your final. Drew Wharton is the hero.
A one-out rally by the Tigers. After seeing the Gamecocks battle back to tie that game in seven in the top of the ninth, and Clemson comes through with a run in the bottom of the inning to win it by a final score of eight to seven. They win this series two games to one. And you see Robert Jolly getting a good read off the bat and hustling all the way around, not assuming that this ball was going to go over the fence. He takes off a slight read, sees that Cortez isn't going to get there, and ends up scoring all the way from first base. What a piece of hitting. But look at the hustle right there. Just pushing it, reading the third base coach around third, slides in safe for the win. Jolly comes in and across and gives the Tigers that 8-7 victory, which means that Riley Gilliam will pick up the victory, makes him 2-1 on the season. And the loss goes to Carmen Majinski. He drops to 0-2. Again, that was Mayer Cortez had moved to right. And that ball went off the fence, and just like that, Clemson has won this series for the fourth consecutive year. And for the third consecutive year, they've lost game one and then come back to win games two and three. But man, they had to work for this one. What a great effort by both these teams. Terrific, exciting ball game. We didn't expect anything less. Walk-off win in the ninth inning. It's an exciting game. Some heroes, a lot of learning opportunities from both teams, and, and, and it's a long season, a long way to go. I'm sure these teams will run into each other again. They have before, but a lot of competition left. We wish the best to both teams for sure. Yep. We are going to keep it here because we're going to meet the most valuable players for each team in this series. The Clemson Most Valuable Player will receive the Bob Bradley Award. The Most Valuable Player for the Gamecocks will receive the Tom Price Award. As the Clemson players are going to gather and sing the alma mater before that happens. Let's take another look at just this final play. It's Drew Wharton with the drive. Cortez chasing after it. It goes off the wall and Jolly motors all the way around from third, first I should say, head first slide. And Clemson wins this game in this series. It's a good piece of hitting. Big moment for Drew Wharton. It's nice for him to step up, a guy who's got a chance to play a lot. He's drove in a lot of runs already in this early season. But having a big walk-off hit in the ninth inning versus South Carolina can do a lot for your morale. What a great comeback for South Carolina as well. It's going to be a good ball club. They're going to make some noise in the SEC. There's a lot of talented players on both teams, no doubt. Playing good competition like this early in the season only betters you, you know, for future games, future competitions. Game went about three hours and ten minutes. You know, when it was six nothing, you never. I know you never say stuff out loud. But I'm just thinking, like, there's no way this thing's gonna end like this. South Carolina has some guys on the team that can swing the bat. They can hold their own in the batter's box. You're never really safe, especially when these guys get comfortable. They played two games and. Now they're out there. They know that they're talented. They're going to eventually come back and figure it out. That is Tim Beret, by the way, who's going to hand out that MVP award for Clemson. And for him, this will be his last Clemson-USC series, provided they don't meet in the postseason. As a member of the official member of the Sports Information Department, Tim has announced his retirement. That's going to happen in July after 40 years at Clemson. We say retired. We know he's going to stick around. We'll Tim, see him. Tim is always a, a Tiger fan. I'm sure he'll be uh, stomping around here all the time. Before Google was created, he was Clemson Google. Still is. His brain's Google. That's stats <laughs> all in it. He knows stats yeah, for decades. Oh. It's incredible how he remembers them all. He remembers people, players' birthdays, 
the things he'll this is this will be the fourth uh, he'll say something like this isn't true he'll say something like this is the fourth time Clemson has beaten South Carolina in the bottom of the ninth when March 4th has fallen on a Sunday in an even numbered year I mean that's the kind of material he comes up with don't look that one up folks that's not a true one I just made that one up Clemson players gathering right down the first baseline. Meanwhile, we've had an extended talk for Mark Kingston with his Gamecocks beyond third. And they're going to take a lot out of this series. This was, they opened up with a long homestand. This was their first true road game. And I'm impressed with that team. They're going to make some noise in the SEC. And it's the danger of this rivalry so early in the season. You don't want to let victories or defeats define you for the rest of the year. You can either have a, a really high high or a low low. It's all about staying even kill and playing consistently. Here's our announcement of those most valuable players. The most valuable player from Clemson is presented with the Bob Bradley Award and the most valuable player from South Carolina with the Tom Price Award. Both men served their respective schools with distinction as sports information directors for baseball for over 40 years. Their passion for their respective baseball programs is a major reason we have sellout crowds and two nationally renowned programs today. Here are the winners of this year's awards. From South Carolina, Adam Hill. Adam Hill had 14 strikeouts in that South Carolina victory on Friday night. His second 14 strikeout performance of the season. One of the best pitchers in the country without question. And from Clemson, Logan Davidson. Hard to argue with that. He spent almost as much time on base as he did in the dugout in this series. Also hit a home run today. Both guys potential high draft picks in the MLB draft. Adam Hill will be eligible this year. Congratulations. So Clemson to both wins over South Carolina with a run in the bottom of the ninth inning to take the game and the series by a final count of eight to seven for Kyle Parker and our statistician and historian Sam Blackman and our entire crew. We say goodbye from Doug Kingsport Stadium in Clemson. We'll see you back here Tuesday night at 630 when the Tigers take on the Wofford Terriers. Until then, have a great night, everybody.